Yes, we are. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. We will call this meeting to order, and I would like to just uh, say uh, I hope everyone had a great weekend. And I believe our vice chairman have an announcement. We both attended the space and knew the event, and it really was a success. And would like him to chime in about it if you could. Absolutely. I mean, again, kudos to uh, all that were involved in that, both staff and for those support organizations at the Spay and Neuter Foundation that was held at Deer Lake Park. Um, obviously, it was uh, sponsored and hosted by um, uh, always a commissioner to me, but Michael Molcare from the third district. A wonderful job. This was his fourth annual, very well attended and sponsored, and I think it accomplished what it needed to do. And I got to meet a new labrador chief. Who was I, I met the little puppy and stuff. And I got to meet a, a true service animal. Um, uh, it was a very nice event, and I want to give a shout out to them. That I think it was successful. I don't know what the end results were, but I, I think they were pleased with the results. So kudos to everybody involved, especially Francis and um, everybody else. We're hoping to clear at least $16,000. Okay. Oh, very good. Very good. Very good, very good though. Thank you. Mm -hmm. very good. All right. Public comment. Um, of course, we have two citizens who signed up this morning. And before you come before us this morning, please, I just wanted to, uh, you all to just be cognizant of our three-minute rule and also um, make sure in order for this meeting to run smoothly and effective, <coughs> ask that you follow the rules and ask that everybody keep order in this room. And with that being said, I will just uh, call <coughs> Mr. Larry Pierce up. Mr. Pierce, if you could just state your name and address. And I, I believe your subject matter is coroner and I can't understand. Coroner and, and others. Good morning, Mr. Pierce. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And I'd like to say it's a good morning. It is. Tiger Woods would like to say it's a good morning, too. So to show you that 20 years of salvation works. Larry Pierce, 4120 Van Sant Road, Douglasville, Georgia. You know, I know some of y'all wonder why I come up here. And I do, too. Because I really have things I do do. Sometimes, even though I've made some people aggravated at Martin's where I go to, <coughs> that they don't even want to sit with me anymore. So that's how bad it's got. But I'd like to say that I wasn't sure what I was going to talk about. And the newspaper made me do it. First, March 7th, I'm in it. Then April 4th, it has to do with Chief Deputy and the lawsuit. But I'm not going to get into that. But what I think is interesting is the fact that she said, I'm dealing with some paperwork about accreditation, national accreditation. Remember when I came up here about a year ago when she went to Las Vegas? <coughs> Well, I'm going to tell you about that in a second. I just want you to keep it on your mind. There was a man that was very famous. Actually, he's infamous. You all remember Ralph Nader? Remember Paparazzi with, with uh, Kennedy Onassis? Well, this man here is in Louisiana. And I actually remember him because I liked the law at that time and what he stood for. His name was Garrison, Jim Garrison from Louisiana. And Jim Garrison <coughs> said that, here's what he said, he had been charged with libel for publicity, stating that a large backlog of criminal cases was due to the inefficiency and laziness of eight judges. He also said the judges were hampering his attempts to enforce vice laws. You know what happens to a man when he says something like that? He got arrested. And he went to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court basically said that few personnel attributes are more germane to fitness for office than dishonesty, malfeasance, and improper motivation, even though these characteristics may also affect the official's private life. And there's other laws that says 
if you decide to run for office or you're a celebrity, you have no private life. Now, I'm going to tell you real quick what this is about. She's going to come up here to you pretty soon and want to go back to Las Vegas, okay? So she said she's working diligently in getting <coughs> national accreditation. Here it is. I called him up. Called him up last week. Got him to send it to me. Quick. What the pages are. It will cost $7,500 to be accredited. And I'm going to tell you what that means. And I hope it doesn't offend anybody. What it means... It means nothing. It means nothing. It was primarily done for medical examiners to have a place to go to and to learn, just like Jekyll Island is a place where the Georgia group goes. But here's a comparison. <clears throat> I thought about this and thought about it, and there's nothing better than this. If you compare this, and everybody knows what an <laughs> Eagle Boy Scout is, okay? They have 50 badges. 50 badges. And if you were to compare this to badge 51, it would say how to put wings on a butterfly, excuse me, on a bullfrog, so it wouldn't bump its ass. And that's what this is. It has nothing to do with anything we need, nor does she need to go out there. Everything is taught in Forsyth County, Georgia, the city of Forsyth. That's where you go. And that is a joke. They make tons of money off of it because it's five hundred dollars a year to be a member, and it's seven thousand to get up. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank so. You. Thank you so much, Mr. Pierce. I didn't know what I was going to say this morning, but the fires have been fanned by others. Yes, sir. Oops. Well, thank you so much. You will take you, this matter under advisement. Next, we have Professor Tomaski. Mr. John Tomaski, please come forward. Give us your address and your subject matter. I'm not trying to read any grand jury decision. Is that what you have in here? Uh, yes, okay. uh, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning to all. Uh, John Tomaski, Successor School Parkway. I am here uh, <coughs> not to uh, uh, speak anything. Uh, on my own initiative, but uh, I am here uh, and uh, I consider privilege and honor uh, uh, to uh, speak for a colleague who is not able to be here today. And I was simply asked to uh, read the contents of uh, these two letters. Uh, the first is dated December 7th, 2018. It's from the Office of the District Attorney, Douglas Judicial Circuit, addressed to uh, Coroner Renee Godwin. Uh, it uh, goes on, uh, dear Mrs. Godwin, the Office of the Douglas County District Attorney has received your request pursuant to the Georgia Open Records Act. This letter is to inform you of the availability of certain records requested and fulfill your request through electronic means. As you are a Douglas County elected representative, the office of the Douglas County District Attorney shall provide the record gratis. Signed, Sean Garrett, <coughs> Assistant District Attorney. Next is a document from the uh, Superior Court of Douglas County, State of Georgia, Grand Jury Action. The members of the grand jury for the April term of 2017 have considered a citizen request for a grand jury investigation into Carter Renee Godwin. We understand it to be a request for the grand jury to investigate the coroner's representations to the Douglas County Board of Commissioners regarding additional funds and matters related to it. We also understand the complaining citizen alleges the coroner may have violated her oath of office. <coughs> the investigation is requested pursuing to Official Code of Georgia Section 151271B2. <coughs> the district attorney has explained that pursuing to that code section, the grand jury has authority to appoint a committee of its members to inspect or investigate any county office, whatever deemed necessary, by eight or more of its members. The grand jury, having considered your request and having voted on the same, does hereby find the following. And there are two alternatives. 
one, the grand jury, by a vote of at least eight of its members, has found it necessary to form a committee to further investigate the coroner. The other alternative, which is the one the grand jury selected, the grand jury, by a vote of its members, declines to investigate the coroner. So decided this seventh day of July 2017, signed by the four person of the Douglas County Grand Jury, April term 2017. That concludes what I was asked to read. Thank you so much, Professor. Appreciate you taking the time to read. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Um, next, we have the approval of the minutes. Uh, commissioners, I ask that you take a look at your minutes tomorrow, uh, the, the minutes before tomorrow, and be prepared to approve accordingly. And our next uh, event is the SWAS presentation. If you could come up, Mr. Terry Gable, and present for us this morning. <coughs> Good morning. Uh, my name is Terry Gable with Mullen Alpha Belly, and I'll be doing the April SPLOS update. So this is, um, <clears throat> obviously we're in April, we're, we've officially um, finished uh, SPLOS year two, so we're headed in our third, uh, third year. Uh, right now, I think as far as revenues, we're um, still showing an, or, uh, an overage, so um, we're, we're on track. If I can get my little clicker there. There we go. So overall, we're uh, with both years, we're right at $24 million with the uh, uh, expenses that have been, have been invoiced out. That's both year one and two. Uh, fire, uh, looking at each program broken down individually, we're right at 13.5. That's been invoiced out to date. And transportation, 7.2 million. And filing parks and recs at 1.2 million. And then looking at the revenues real quick, uh, looking at the graph of it, uh, year year two again has been a good year. We we flattened out here at the end uh, with February and, and January. They were just within a few thousand dollars of, of each other. So hopefully we'll go out of year two with a with a big bang and we'll, we'll come up above the projections uh, for for year two. Uh, both years, looking at both years, we're right at 47.1 uh, million. Uh, we've, we're back at an overage for both years, uh, like we've been reporting on. Uh, year two has really uh, brought us up above where we were uh, coming out of year one. So we're right out of a million dollars for, for an overage. Uh, looking at the hard numbers for uh, February, we, we were right at 1.9 million. And again, if you just look at year two and you break that out, uh, as far as an overage and comparing that to projections, we're right at $1.4 million over. So we're still, um, still help again. Year, uh, year two was a good year and we're still uh, had a good positive balance with it. As far as the, the bond obligations, we've made the first payment back in October. Uh, the second one was made in April and we'll be moving in again. We're moving into the third year and we'll start the, the uh, bond repayments back over again. <coughs> we'll go on to uh, in the fire. These are just some the completed projects under the fire department for the uh, for chief. And then with the county rod uh, digital uh, radio system, uh, it's it's within scope, uh, within schedule, and, and um, within budget right now. We're still looking at finishing up in near in October or November. Um, the main thing Motorola was working on right now, those last three um, parcels that were late uh, getting the uh, the land acquisitions uh, completed, uh, but we, we have them now. All still gas work started, 
uh, factory shows in South Douglas. We're still in the design process. Uh, this that's finishing up. And actually, uh, trying to get permits from both those those pieces of land. So it's it's moving forward. Uh, he still it has bumped out his for the uh, all the sites. The other sites are completed. So we may we may run into July. Um, because of because of the l later process on the on these two parcels, uh, but as far as the overall completion date, we're still looking good at, uh, around October and November. <coughs> Just real quick on the some equipment for the chief, uh, we will have one um, ambulance that'll be purchased this year this year that he's already working on. Uh, fire truck, we'll have uh, one fire truck that is in the process of being procured. Station three uh, reno uh, renovations are, are winding down. We had a final walkthrough last week with a contractor, so that's uh, nearing completion. It'll, we're in April, it'll be, it'll be finished by the, certainly by the end of the month. Uh, then we'll be working on some minor, uh, minor items, getting the crews back in and getting the temporary housing the, uh, trailer uh, back to uh, the vendor. So the projects ended up, I think, very nice. This was a shot I took last week. Um, I think that would be a, a something the county be proud of, and I know the crews are ready to get moved back in and get out of that trailer. <laughs> so staff vehicles, are, the chief and them will be ordering three trucks this year, and again, that's all being, is in the process of being procured. And with that, any questions on parks? I mean, uh, fire before <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got quiet after a second. Any questions on fire? Make sure we're awake. Transportation uh, completed projects for Miguel, mainly resurfacing. Um, and looking at, uh, let me catch up with myself. The resurfacing program, again, we've included the Elmick resurfacing, which are the shorter subdivision roads, and then the, uh, the SPLOS funds. Um, it was, the bids have been received, the recommendation for award is on the, uh, the, the agenda for this, this uh, board meeting. Once we get that done and get a notice to proceed, we'll be moving forward with that. Getting a little bit earlier start this year than we did last year, so that's good as far as uh, uh, being able to get the work done sooner than later, uh, taking advantage of the weather. <coughs> Payment uh, evaluations uh, are ongoing. Uh, we've, uh, that's coming on real well. We've got about a six month um, completion date on that, which should end up around August, uh, hopefully a little sooner than that. And th these evaluations are, are, real, are what will be driving your 2020 list. And Miguel will have them uh, available. Uh, to start making uh, some better decisions uh, as far as uh, cost and, and need. And then we're still tracking, obviously, the LMIG funds, and the Gale's telling me that the maintenance is back resurfacing, they have, they have their equipment back, um, hopefully we uh, wrapping those up spring and early summer. And starting with our intersections, um, with Stuart, Stuart Mill Road, we're still in the design stage with it. Um, I'm hoping that this is going to be one of the projects we get uh, get through April and into May that uh, uh, Jacob will be providing Miguel with a, a final set of plans and uh, and right away plans for him to start any right away negotiations that he needs to move forward with. <coughs> Bright Star Road at John West uh, is in the, uh, the right-of-way phase also. The design is complete on it. Um, Miguel's about 80% done right now with, uh, with right-of-way, and hopefully that'll be a project right now he's looking to let in May um, once he gets all the right-of-way parcels secured. And some of those are, are on, the, uh, on this month's board agenda, too, for approval. And then Sweetwater Church, everything's done with it, the right of way, that, that project is going out for bid uh, in May also. 
Well, it's going to be good to get, um, and it's a good time of the year with the, with obviously with the work and, and the weather uh, to get these, some of these projects on the way. And then finally, uh, finally Chapel Hill Road, as far as intersections go, and uh, we've got a, a public information meeting on the 23rd uh, that will be rolling this out as far and have a display for it and showing right away impacts and taking questions from the uh, from the comment. Once that's done, then SEI can move forward with the final design as we move into the summer with this project. Highway 5 at Douglas Boulevard, Miguel's got, um, we have a, um, an RFQ out. We had a pre-bid meeting last week for that to uh, select a consultant and a number of consultants to help with the design on this project as well as some other ones. Um, we'll, we'll get this one started. The design on it, since it's just the right turn lane, is not, it should go fairly quickly. Uh, again, the, the utilities and the right of way will be the, the driving factors for this right turn lane project. But the main thing is, is get it get it designed so we can we can realize the impacts for it and start setting a schedule for it, and also getting a budget. Post Road Bridge Dog River um, still waiting on a contractor to complete his uh, some of the other bridges so he can get moved into Douglas County. Uh, we are still working. Miguel's office still working with trying to secure the one only one I think right away <coughs> parcel that we're, we're having to obtain on this on the bridge. Um, the last three are our sidewalk projects. Again, the plans are basically, the plan, plans are done. Miguel has them for review. Uh, what we did do on Lithia Springs and, and Chestnut Log is we've asked the contract, I mean the designer, SEI, to go back and, and redesign the footprint for the sidewalk uh, to limit, uh, limit the amount of right-of-way, which uh, would only drag us out into the summer. But keeping my fingers crossed, I think it's going to be very limited, uh, minimal amount of right of way that the last typical section that we gave them, and we can get this project also finished up and get it and get it out uh, on the street uh, in May. And that includes also the New Manchester High uh, High School. <coughs> The Whitestone Culvert is a project that we've added. It was recently led to construction. Um, so we've, we've got a placeholder for it now. We'll, we'll be moving funds um, into this budget to, to uh, carry the, the full budget for the, for the culvert. Uh, and we'll, we'll track this as the contract, contract gets started and uh, completes this project. And then this is a placeholder for Lee Road widening project. We've got it set in the budget, $11 million. Um, and obviously it's driven by the, the, the other portion of the funding. Um, once we get that secured with, with GDOT, we'll, we'll, Miguel's office will kick this project in gear and we'll get it, um, hopefully, to letting. We have one kind of um, under the uh, the safety funds that we Mr. had on me and Mr. Gable, we have one comment from one of the board of commissioners for you. Uh, sure, Mr. Chairman Robinson, if you have something. Yeah, yeah, I, I well, just a, a couple of things, and, and I didn't want you, I didn't want to lose my thought about <coughs> sidewalks. Um, we, in trying to accomplish two objectives, um, one is to encourage um, business owners that live here an opportunity, afford them an opportunity to sort of build themselves up, right, to grow. Sidewalks, um, contracts lead to parking lots, parking lots lead to streets and so forth and so on. At some point you can bid on DOT type stuff, right? You've got to get your track record, you've got to get your bonding capacity, etc. And again, I, I keep listening to it like, why, does it, why is it so hard to do sidewalks? It's okay, I, I get it, but I'm, I'm emphasizing <coughs> for, for citizens sometimes who are looking at contracts that are being uh, awarded uh, and you know, what is the criteria to get them? Um, you just can't come and bid on a DOT contract or one of our role contracts. Like, no, you got to have some experience. You, you, it ain't that easy, but you have opportunities to deal yourself up is my point. So I want to emphasize that around the sidewalks. But two sidewalks, uh, and Miguel will attest to this, we continue to get people asking, well, since y'all are doing sidewalks, do this sidewalk, do this, do Mac Road, etc. 
And I would like to, and Madam Chair, put a note, a footnote, for us to look at. Um, uh, I saw a sidewalk strategy, and it may be in place somewhere, I don't know, but come up with a strategy across the county. Uh, Commissioner Mitch and I had this conversation this morning during our little powwow, which is, okay, let's look at, um, and we, you start with something that's called like um, um, a, a safe passage of safety, right? From schools to parks, parks to schools, start with all schools, all parks, and figure out the sidewalk path for that, and come up with just this, this broader strategy. What is the strategy? How many road miles or sidewalk miles or whatever it's called, or feet, I guess it would be, you know, sidewalk feet, and figure that out because we, it's not going to go away. And as the, as the citizens begin to see us saying, yeah, we I mean, everybody, I mean, some people like to be mobile walking wise, right? Um, everybody doesn't live in a subdivision, right? Um, that's neatly manicured. And so there's different needs. We understand the county evolved over time. We understand it had a rural nature and it wasn't built in like an urban city, but, but in essence, it can be the best of both worlds. Um, the second thing with, with, when you think about sidewalks and, and I, I'll, I'll bring it to a closure, which is really about the spend. Um, and, and I want to be careful when I hear us say, well, we don't want to do uh, as much right away. That's the same conversation we had with the bike lanes for Riverside. And it's something I'm going to challenge you guys on. Like, y'all got to be careful with your narrative about this so-called savings uh, when it compromises quality, right? I, I need y'all, like, if you're going to do, if there's a standard for sidewalks, maintain the sidewalks. Don't come in here with this, like, okay, it's supposed to be 21 feet or 21 inches, and it comes at 18 or 17, and then a wheelchair can't get on it, or two people can't walk at the same time, which extends my conversation is that, one thing is regarding our, um, um, our transportation and specifically with our new fixed route system is that there's an expectation that people should be able to get on and get off safety. Safety, not only about uh, American Disability Act, um, things of that nature, but just common sense. Common sense, which means, guys, sure. now how y'all gonna lay this down? And this is just more for the team's effort. Y'all need to make sure y'all synchronize sidewalks with things that you know that may be not related, but it, it, it's at the same point. That's a sidewalk, that's a launching pad, that's an onboarding, offboarding. Everything's not in, um, I mean, I can think of numerous um, cases where there's not much there. Y'all need to be thoughtful about that, all right? So as I, again, so I'm sitting here, we're doing these one-offs, and I'm like, so I'm challenging somebody, Mark, I'm gonna start with you, to have a bigger picture that says, okay, now how am I gonna synchronize all these needs? Who's looking at the full needs and pulling all the, this portfolio of need together so that we can get a better understanding of it? So. Uh, I'm, I want to just make that comment and that request. Sure. And the last thing is, um, and again, I won't take any thunder from my, my colleague regarding the signs. Uh, and Madam Chair, you've emphasized this about the need to communicate with the public where it's like, okay, it's coming, it's coming. We're doing a lot of design work. And before you know it, it's going to be like, boom. It's going to be stuff all over the place, a lot of disruption. You know, excuse our mess type of thing. And what is our, our sign approach to really let people know it's coming, but also <coughs> Some of the neat stuff I've seen around here, which is, well, I guess it's coming as far as letting people feel their, uh, their tax dollars through, um, I don't know, graphic designs and stuff. So what, what's your approach to that? That's a question. Signs. Um, as far as the signs go, last staff meeting with, we had uh, with Mark and the department heads, um, we talked in depth about the signs and making sure everybody understood the, the route for the, how the expenses for them and that to move forward with it's installing the little portable signs that you'll see out on all the projects that being from resurfacing the fire stations to what goes on the back of the some of the fire equipment to make the public fully aware of any projects that are being spent with splash dog so you, you said expense i mean what are you saying expense for the signs it, it, it but inherently in there we got to communicate to the public right so sure. we have a concern that there's not enough money and all that splossed what do, do y'all what are y'all saying? That we've got to come before the Board of Commissioners to determine, like, how do you not tell the public that Lee Rose is about to be disrupted for the next three weeks? Oh, we are. No, I mean, and this is just more, it's not, it's not <coughs> critical. It's more of a, why does that matter? Is that not already part <coughs> of the, isn't that already part of it? Sure. Yeah. <coughs> yes, sir. Okay. I mean, it, it is something that, for example, I'll use with my town hall, it's like, well, where are my signs? And, and we have an in-house print shop, and of course I had to nudge that, like, oh, my bad, okay, let me get on this, and they got out within 24 hours. 
I guess I'm, I'm, I'm using it as a moment like, guys, don't forget, you got to communicate with the, the public. You can't be in the vacuum and we're so into our PowerPoints and all this stuff and look what we're doing. The public has no idea and, and then we drop this on them. And so I think there's a courtesy and it shouldn't have to be a business decision to say that should already be baked in. I mean, it's enough money and 160 million dollars spots to come up with a few signs that we got to already have a print shop in house that we can do that. So it's little, that's a delay that's not necessary. Make it a checklist. Look at all these projects. And I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll defer that, but you, I think y'all get my point. Come on guys, it's about to get busy for the next three years, three, four, and five. And it's gonna hit the public and where they still, even though they're <coughs> spending their money, they still wanna, you gotta let them know that it's coming. And it's just courtesy. Okay. 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 Thank you. You're good. I'll just and I think we had the conversation. And I think you get where this is coming from because we've actually had the conversation earlier this morning yeah, that this conversation has been kind of ongoing when that's something we should have, and I know Mark, you might want to kind of adhere to this, that that should have been something that should have been done on day one to say, this is where your supply dollars are, this is kind of where the monies are, this is kind of how things are moving, and here are the projects, and so on. So, but it's, it's the timing as we talked about this morning. It's great. We've had the conversation many, many over a year ago, but we still haven't kind of executed that outside of, we know we got to look at the expense, we got to look at, but I think that expense should be nominal compared to the projects that we're doing. So, yeah. So if we, if we can. Oh, and it's the plan's in place. And I, I'm, I know we've already been putting signs up uh, on certain projects. I, I don't know if there's anything yeah. that's holding The back. staff was directed <laughs> in the beginning. Every project we have, we need supply signs up at every single okay. location. So I guess maybe I'm missing that, that I, I haven't seen those. But if you are, if you're doing that, that's kind of what we were talking about. Like, yeah, they're yes. supposed to be. Oh, okay. So that now yeah, I haven't missed. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, what, there's not there's only there's not there's a, not a lot of projects going on yet. A lot of them are still in design, which so there's no signs out on those projects yet. Got it. So like the, the, the fire station. Well, no fire station. Yeah, there should have been signs out. So there were not. That I don't, I don't recall. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't remember seeing them. No. Okay. Right. There's I don't, not left, right. Exactly. So that's what I'm getting at. So it, I, I think we're, we're the conversation is. What are we waiting on? And that that's such a small expense to me for the projects that's going on. I totally agree. Yeah, so let, let's just kind of move on that versus coming back to a meeting for us to approve how we market the supplies dollars as to how it's been spent. Okay. Yep. Sure. I, I do that. <laughs> and, and of course, the other thing we've talked about are the, the renderings for the, the verticals yes. uh, that the commissioner uh, mentioned and those will be around the building yes and those will be at the public any public information meetings that, that we'll, when we make sure we have them available um, the rendering yeah, got another good message the rendering of so you might want to make sure you share the, the well the one in the background over there is the the uh, multi-purpose rec center mm -hmm. and we have one another rendering for the, the senior. new senior center right right so those types of rendering so at least everybody the, the, uh, the bill art and the um, Fair play. Fair play. We ones are already have done. Those small yeah. projects, but we'll have those also. Right. So each commissioner, if they so choose at their meetings, if they're speaking from a parks and rec perspective, they can kind of take these renderings and say, hey, this is kind of what things will look like, mm -hmm. especially when you have those questions. And I think it's just a good marketing tool sure. to show, show how great we're doing with the splash dollars. Right. So, okay. I get it. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I just want to just chime in a little bit, Mark, on the but we wrote, uh, our plan is to, the, the uh, resurfacing project is to put some signs out in advance because what I want to do is make sure, and also I know you as well, Vice Chairman and all our commissioners want to make sure the citizens are, can wrap their minds around it because it's going to inconvenience them somewhat and their lives will change temporarily. So, you know, they're excited about the road coming up, but we definitely need to have some signs blinking now. I, I would envision some out there now just to count so they can be prepped for this. Getting ready. And I've already made it clear to all the citizens, I said, this is not a tooth filling, this is a root canal. Now it's going to be big, and we want to make sure everybody understands that. So if we can get some flashing signs, of, and Mark is working on that for me, so I'll okay. move along. Yeah. All right, so. Very good. Go ahead. Go for it. Um, these next three, if, uh, if you remember, we've got a million dollars for a safety, a safety category. So the next three projects we've uh, we've got placeholders in there for the first one's the street lights. It will be in various locations in the county. 
Again, the budget's just a placeholder for it. And once we get a more defined scope on those, we'll, on all three of these, we'll start working uh, in the budgets. Uh, this one's a Highway 92 at Mount Vernon uh, for a traffic signal. The work's already in, in place with that. Mark and Miguel have worked working with GDOT to get, uh, to get a badly needed signal out at, um, at Mount Vernon. And then the last one is the Highway 92 at Riverside Parkway improvements. Um, again, we'll need to develop a scope here and know exactly what uh, what we can do and what GDOT will allow uh, to be done at that intersection to improve the safety of it. So three important uh, safety projects there we've, that we've uh, just added. And with that, we'll, we'll move into... Terry, we yes. have one, one, well, one question. This is... Uh, at, um, while we recognize that we reappropriated money from the um, SR92 Anawake up in Fairburn accordingly, it, mm -hmm. it should have been done that way. But, it, um, <coughs> but there was still the need to deal with the turn lane, right? We knew we didn't need to um, redirect that whole intersection, but we need to do something with it. Um, a lot of comments we've gotten. I've been working with City Councilman Richard Siegel, who obviously most of Riverside is primarily in the city. Um, and, and so I've gotten a, a, a series of um, sets of emails where people have weighed in saying they have this need. Um, also, we do, we are aware that there are certain pending economic development decisions that are being made based on like that light, right? Or some type of um, um, dealing with congestion <coughs> right there. So this is not just about existing, it's about stuff that's pending that says, well, we don't want to drop this amount of new homes or new units in this area that um, um, obviously can already handle what it currently has. So that's an important um, project. It's not only just impacting us, it's impacting our other jurisdiction. Um, we're all believing in economic development, so I don't want that to fall in, uh, by the wayside when I hear, like, well, we got to figure out the scope, like, okay. Well, let's not, let, let's, let's, one more time, work breakdown structure, right? How, discover, design, define, develop, deploy. Right. Um, what, what is your methodology to, to, to moving on this? So that's, that's the part that I'm, you know, we talked about this this morning, so I'm just right. reemphasizing this for the record, that we need to go ahead and move on that. We, to Commissioner Mitchell's point, when we talk about stuff, we, we come back 30 days later and we're talking about it again. We come back 30 days later and we're talking about it again. So we'd like to see a little bit more effort on that one, at least discovery of what it could be. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And also, before we go uh, forward, I would just like to publicly thank uh, Sheriff Pounds and his command staff for working with us working on that, that 92 and the Mount Vernon uh, intersection because that they've stepped up to the plate. They're providing, um, uh, should I say, traffic control from uh, eight o'clock in the morning till uh, 845, which really helps a lot. And I understand just speaking to some of our staff members and some of the citizens at large said that the traffic is definitely moving at that time of the morning until we can get this light up. <coughs> so again, thank you, Sheriff Pounds and your command staff and also your deputies that's out there directing traffic. I yield back to you. Sure. Okay? Okay. Uh, completed projects for the parks. And the first one uh, is Boundary Waters concession building. I got a text from the contractor this morning. He's making good progress and we're, we're going to complete this in May. Uh, and there's the last shot I took of it last week. Uh, some colors starting to come together with the roof. And, um, but he came in this morning with the rain yesterday. It's, it's, it's full of water again. Uh, so he has battled the, the weather this, this year or this winter uh, as, as everyone else too. So but this project's moving along. He's, he's managed to get it up. Uh, we've, uh, we've finally got power out there with Greystone. Um, so again, we're schedule-wise, we're, we're, I think we're on schedule to complete it uh, in May, I feel. Uh, the main thing he needs to work on now, obviously, is trying to get the landscaping in place and some of the sidewalk in. Um, and you've got some change orders uh, on the agenda this meeting to, to approve for that. And then what, uh, adjacent to that is the soccer field lighting. Again, we, we've, we've got power in the building, so that, that should move um, West Georgia lighting along to get the power on the soccer field lights and we can get those tested and, and get those up and running for the kids out here. Uh, Deer Lick tennis courts uh, on the budget, I mean on the uh, agenda for this month is uh, we broke out the demo work for the, for the park and we'll go ahead and get started with that. Um, integrated construction 
Uh, and once that's approved, we'll get them get them a, a purchase order and let them get started. We're in the final design stage for the uh, for the tennis courts and getting a, a cost estimate developed, and we'll be letting this project also in, in May. And then talking about the multi-purpose rec center, it's we're in the final stage for that. Uh, going through the, the details of right down to the, the gym equipment and and the um, all the IT and, uh, all the IT uh, inner work workings of it. Uh, the design I think is going to be completed late May, maybe in going into June, as long as we, we don't run into any issues with um, some of the IT stuff. Uh, and we'll um, have that project. It'll the design will wrap up in June, and then we'll get it let out uh, in. In July, so we're on track right now. Of what we're talking about next year, um, right in July 2020, of having it completed. And then the senior center is right behind it. Uh, actually, yeah, it's actually a little ahead of it. Uh, a little smaller structure, but we're in the final design stages for it. Um, should be completed, wrapping it up this month, um, and being able to get it out for out for bids uh, probably in May. Both uh, architects, with Sutton doing the rec center and Carter Watkins doing the senior, senior center, are doing very well with these projects. And then Bill Art Park, uh, along with Fair Play, these are just the concession buildings. Um, the bids are we've, we've advertised for bids, and they're back. They're due uh, <coughs> April 23rd. I'm looking around probably September completion date for that once we get started. <coughs> hopefully we can get into some drier weather um, and get those completed uh, by the end of the early fall, end of the summer, something like that. And the, there's the fair play uh, lights. We all we're waiting on here, the, all the poles and the, the lights are up. It's just waiting on Greystone to get power. And we're working with them now uh, to do that. And we will be, we'll fire those up and have them ready for Gary and the Parks Committee. And I think that's going to wrap it up. And miscellaneous quick, Gary's already had purchased a couple of trucks. And we'll still some funds left this year for him to just let us know what we need. And with that, I'll conclude. Any any other questions? Any questions or comments, uh, Vice Chairman? Robinson? Just just broadly, just for the public, and sometimes it, it. Then again, I, I'll, I'll use this as a data point going to my town hall on Wednesday. <coughs> this plus, and Mark, you you know this probably off the top of your head. This plus um, um, over six years um, should generate what about 160, 160 million? What did we? Yes, yeah, sir. 160 be the top. Uh, 160 at the top. All mm -hmm. things being equal. Um, um, we bonded a five-year, we, we issued a bond to pay for our things that, you know, we're <coughs> waiting for it to come in as we go for five years. And how much did we bond? Just 60 or 70? 75 total. 50 was the county. 60. 60 was the county? 60 was the county. No, it was 60 total. 60 total. We <coughs> split 40-20. Okay. 40 county, 20 city. That, that accurate? Mm -hmm. All, right. Uh, all right, so we, this is about 40 million worth of work. Right, not, um, so we're saying for the telecommunications tower, um, the community center, senior center, uh, the verticals, the, the fire station people are probably aware of, uh, including um, <coughs> intersections, all of that. Is that about right, Mark, that we stuffed most of this stuff inside the bonding part, or did we spread it? I'm just, what can the public expect from Fort Dodd Um it's four, we haven't even spent all the bond money yet. Yeah. So right now, I mean, so as far as what's included and what's not, it's just first come, first serve, which would which we go to the bond money first. Okay. And so the public needs to just be aware that uh, while we have a list, so everything that's on the list that we talk about, and, just, and I'll end it with this, everything that's on the so-called list, bond money or splos over time, what fits in that list when we get to it. I don't understand the question. On our SPLOS list, right? Mm -hmm. All right. 
there's a certain amount of money that we're going to generate <coughs> and then there's a certain amount that this is going to cost. Does it all fit? Everything is on that list. Will we get to it within the bond money or will we have to catch up with some of that with the pay go later? That's there will be things on the list that neither will pay for and we won't get to. Ah, there you go. Yeah. That's yeah. all I'm trying to, you know, as we're talking, we're talking about we're adding to the list and, and, and Mr. Mitchell, you know where I'm going with this. It's just we're setting expectations. That's all. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not unlimited. It's not a, a perpetual money that we'll have. It's like at some point, you know, we're going to have to cut this off yes, and, and, and be appropriate since it wasn't part of the referendum. It's sort of out there. And I just want to make sure I'm clear as I communicate to my citizens about like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, I don't think we're going to make that. And, 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 and that's my call. That's me as an elected official. And it's not about staff. I just wanted to make sure. I wanted to hear for the record, Madam Chair, we're not going to get to everything. And we've told the public all along. Okay. We, we've showed where that line is. Now the line moves, it moves. depending on how much the uh, revenues are, and depends on how much these projects come in over. Um, since construction costs are up, so it's moving up and down, and we're tracking that. Um, but yes, sir, there are things on the list that we will not get to. Now, that's it. Reprioritization and shifts, and which is all allowed but by way of process. But I just want to make sure we're saying it because, uh, again, yes. we're already going into our third year. Right. Um, it's moving and so we're still waiting to see stuff pop up right we're waiting for the little thing to pop up to see it but that's all we just want to emphasize follow the money i'm good enough okay. Okay. thank you okay thank you just want just for the record the 45 it was around 45 million for the county 21 million for the city <coughs> and as of um today we've spent we've got about 23 5 23 million 500 left for county bond proceeds but that also includes interest or an interest on those bond proceeds, and the city has 13.8 million mm -hmm. remaining. Okay, all right, so we got a little, little something to work with right now, but mm -hmm. all of that probably is already earmarked for some type of. <coughs> mm -hmm. Madam Chair, yeah. just because Sorry. you mentioned this about being in the third year, besides the subcategory of arbitrage rules, you know, you have to reasonably intend that to construct that <coughs> to spend the 45 million we got within the. 85% of the 45 million within the first three years. Mm -hmm. With it, some other subcategories, I don't want to go into technicalities in order to avoid arbitrage <coughs> or taxation on the interest earned above the investment. So, I, you know, we need to be we caught clear on that, I'm sure. Every year we have that evaluated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Commission and I just need something for clarity. The bond is what we pay first anyway. Then we look at everything right. else. So um, there will be or may be projects that fall below the line, as we all mm -hmm. keep speaking of. Um, and the adjustment will go accordingly just based on the fact of what we collect and how we collect and, you know, come year five, six, where we're looking at. So, yeah, there will be a there may be some that, well, at the rate we're collecting, we could be to the good of adding a project below the line if, correct, if we continue to spend, meaning those citizens that go and spend that that uh, point of sale, right, that we'll, we'll end up doing well. But at the end of the day, you, there's no magic number or magic uh, set to this. It's one of those, the bond is paid first. Whatever the, there is thereafter, we deal with and deal with it accordingly when it comes to the cities and uh, and the county's portion of what we deal with. So, and then the interest as well. So, I think that's a good. That's a, that's a good to the end of all of this. So, sure. Would you say that? I mean, am I? Yeah. No, I, that's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the important importance of the uh, the, the uh, priority list, mm -hmm. having and tracking the funds and um, and having risk right. and built into it. Right. Knowing, you know, based on what the, the revenues do over the, over the life of the program. Right. And, and, and there are some savings in categories like the, the towers and the <coughs> radio, system. radio system. Right now, there appear to be as such. But if there isn't, based on the mere fact of who knows by the time we get done with the project, there could be. <coughs> the possibilities are great that there will be a savings. But we, can't, we won't know that until we actually complete the project. Right. But from where we sit now, from going from 16 mil to 15 mil, and now we're somewhere closer to uh, uh, the 15 mil now than we ever have been, but that's still somewhat of a saving based on what we projected. Right. We, we have tapped into the little bit of a savings for the okay. change orders for it, but it's, right. it's still there. Right. Okay. So, and we're doing it, so okay. I'll, I'll yield back. And, yeah. okay. Thank you, Commissioner Mitchell. Commissioner Guider. Yes. Um, 
we, we often talk about revenues and that revenues are pretty good, but they, they're beginning to flatten out, like you said. Um, but on the estimated cost of the projects that we have <clears throat> already started, uh, or we have an estimate on what is going to finish, but we also had an estimate of going into it, our estimate. <coughs> How much have we exceeded that? We, we, well, I think that's what's already impacted the list. Like Mark was saying, that's we we're already showing, seeing some of the results results of that when I show the projects list up and we're starting to highlight some projects in the yellow. That's the adjustments we're making, and everybody's aware now, fully aware, the architects too, that building materials are up, everything's up right what now. What percentage are building materials up? Uh, I, from from the time we bid out, just from the time we bid out boundary waters to what we possibly could be looking at uh, with uh, Fair Play and Bill Art with about 10 to 15 percent. 10 to 15 percent. Um, so just was that just not materials. put in the estimates originally? Well, it, it was all based on the cost at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then just the, the the, the sheer increase of the economy and, and how quick things have picked up mm -hmm. since the, the original budgets were built by the Department of Heads and Martin. So which which budgets have greatly exceeded the expectations? Well, you know, we so the, the fire station, for example, I think made us very quickly aware that we were we were looking at some higher. How much numbers. was it over? Do you remember? Um, so we we the estimate was around two hundred thousand dollars. And the, the low bid was 442. So it was almost double. It, there it did. You know, re Renovation is a little bit, a little bit diff more difficult. For we're under on the uh, radio system, so we we're under on the radio uh, in system. that category. Right. So uh, and some of the other projects, what are we over? One um, of the big ones. The one of the <laughs> next one that we we were um, <clears throat> we did was the Boundary Waters Concession Building, and the architect Carter Watkins had that one. Uh, just under, um, just over five hundred thousand, five twenty-five, and then the bids came in at seven. Low bid was seven ten, and we had you know, that bid. We had a high bid; it was almost a million at the time. Uh, but the low bid for that, so you went from around five fifty <coughs> to seven ten. Well, I used to work in construction for a general contractor, mm -hmm. and we had a budget. We put the bids out there and the plans out there. We've got to live within this budget. Do we do that when we tell the architect to draw the Certainly. plans? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so they're supposed to draw it within that budget. Yes. As far as uh, the build out. And the architects are very, do very well at that. They, they know our budgets, particularly for the rec center. Gary Pete Sutton, mm -hmm. that we've been working with, he's been uh, doing a real good job of. of of talking to us about what he thinks contracts going to be bidding it for, um, and keeping us abreast of what you know what the actual cost may be. Well, um, the center too. I mean, there, seems <clears throat> I think there was three uh, concepts for the youth center. Is that right? That was for the rec center. And that, that's that's what for drove that. Mm -hmm. Each one of them had and, their own price. But we, which one did we go with? The, the number two. Middle of the road, yes. Okay, we did go with the and and on the senior center, the same thing. There wasn't a three. The, yeah, so far the the budget for the senior center, based on the original estimate that was put in the splots, we've been we're under. under. Good, right. good, yes. good. Mm -hmm. right. Well, uh, and you know we're concerned with uh, because a lot of the projects are starting <coughs> inside of the county, and the ones that's get going to get cut are going to be on the, the other side of the county. And so we're we're watching that. A lot of the people have uh, come in and made, are we going to get anything out of this splash? And because somewhere down the line, the whole county is going to vote on another splash probably. Mm -hmm. And if they don't see, uh, you know, the projects being completed on their side of the county, even <coughs> Benson, even the uh, uh, concession stand for the, one of the oldest parks, Winston. I believe that's been cut. Is it? Is that not true? Um, you, you don't think that's going to make the? No, I don't think so. 
But you don't think don't it's going to make the cut? At this point, no. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it won't work. But we, we were told that it probably would not be built. Uh, and that's one of the oldest concession stands where the, <laughs> the floor was actually given way. Right. And uh, uh, so, and they had all kinds of problems with the restrooms and everything else. But, um, uh, so we're staying pretty well <coughs> within the, esti the original estimate. Um, the, we're tracking all the projects. We're staying within within the budgets. Um, yes, we, we are. If, if I understand. In the original yes. scopes, we're we're staying within those. Most certain. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I just wanted to let you know that there is other areas that need to be addressed too. So, uh, I, with that, I go back. Okay. Thank you. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Sorry. no, no. no it, it, to that point, thank you. Real, real quick, and I, I appreciate um, the commentary that um, you know we're still working on 2002 spots right from the prior administration, um, and, and during that time period, um, there was plenty ample time to set priorities that would have benefited the West versus the East. Um, there was nothing that hindered that consideration other than perhaps there was a narrative that just we don't want a splash, we don't want nothing, we don't need anything. I'm not insensitive to the fact that now there's been a shift in that, like, well, wait a minute, well, duly noted, but it, no, no one feels bad about not giving voice to something that one had control over, right? Um, that, that, so it's important that this board recognize it, yes, there are other areas, yes, duly noted, but during that time period, what, what did you do when you had leadership? second one. I'm going to move beyond that because I think what my whole point was following the math. 45 million, 21 million gets me to 66, right Jennifer? Follow my math. We said that this, what do we generate per month? 2 million per month? Yes. Times 12 is 24. Times 6 years is 150, less than, you know, 140, 150, <coughs> right? That was something like that. 6 quarters equals 150. So give or take, good math. So that's, that's 150 million that this plot should generate if we hit every month 2 million, 150. Easy math. We bonded or took a loan ahead of time. Uh, we spotted the city on our credit, right? We, we think about what we did now. <coughs> we spotted the city, right? And we said, oh, we're going to take care of y'all. We're going to work together. And so back to the, you're making sure other people's um, needs get met. We made sure that the city, our, our, our capital, our, 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 our county seat, was taken care of, right? So again, so what we focused on as opposed to being spread, we focused where the density was, city. So that's the other decision that went into why it was here versus there. Um, so that being said, we took a loan, just say, I said 66 million plus four points, that, there's your 70 million, right, county and city, which means that there's probably, what, 80 million still left over that perhaps we'll get to spend, did I do that right? If you took a loan, you got to pay back that loan, all in. Um, so you took a loan of 70 million, give or take, interest, keep it, keep it simple, 75 million. You pay that back out of the cash that's coming in, just stacking up in your piggy bank, right? You got to pay that loan every year, make that note, don't miss that payment, principal interest. That means that at the end of six years, where the bond is being paid back over five years, at the end of the day, did I do it wrong? I should have about what? And you're actually getting that every year. You're getting paygo, what we call paygo money, right? Um, because as Commissioner Mitchell had right. mentioned, that we, you know, the the splashed year runs will be in April. What we receive in April will start going toward debt service again, right. okay? Right. Um, then it. once debt service is funded for that bond year, which runs April through March, yep. once that debt service is funded for that year, <coughs> say if it takes seven months, right, to fund it. Months 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 go into a separate account. Yes. Of what we call, or what I reference as PAYGO money. Mm -hmm. That money is set aside. It does not have any arbitrage restrictions because it's strictly SPLOS dollars. It's not bond proceeds or anything. And it's sitting in an account. Yes. Not being spent. As Mark mentioned, we go to bond proceeds first. Right. Because we want to spend that money. We borrowed that money. Mm -hmm. We want to go ahead and spend it first because it does have arbitrage right. interest mm -hmm. requirements. Um, so you're actually getting that money every, I think we're a little over 14 million right now into PAYGO. 
right. um, and that March's sploss that came in went straight to PAYGO, um, split with the cities, of course, and then we now start for the month of April, we'll start funding that service again. Mm -hmm. So there will be some, um, at the end of this, there should be, I mean, it's supposed to generate, based on that math, 150 mm -hmm. easy math, mm -hmm. and we're only borrowing at 70, which means we've got to pay that back. There still should be enough that there's probably, and we only put on the list, which is the 70 million, based on what I understand, mm -hmm. Mark, give or take, we know costs are going up and it's compromising the mm -hmm. list. My point is that there should be some room on the back side of this for the board to come back together and, 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 and set a, a new priority list based on, well, all that was done based on the first round, but mm -hmm. you still got this S unless y'all decide to turn it back to the citizens, which you know um, obviously is an option. But, but I, I guess my point is I don't want it to get lost that, or, or I heard the sentiment like, no, you should have something it, it may be on the back side, but you still, it should be there. So I don't want to think that people are getting shorthanded here. You need to be thoughtful, you need to get ahead of the curve, you need to vocalize what that need is, but there is um, ample opportunity for the tax dollars to go around accordingly. So I just wanted to clarify that and break the math down for the average citizen. They said, no, there's enough there. You just need to make sure you vocalize it. I get it. And some of that PAYGO money is actually for things that are already on the list, we just didn't bond for. Exactly. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Gable. Great job. Good um, communications director. Um, good. Do you have anything? This is good. Did you have anything for us today? I just want to make sure you have anything to communicate. I don't want to put you on the spot if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Um, I just wanted to just make it clear that at in any type of a meeting, whether it's to coffee and conversation, mm -hmm. are we doing anything out there at Dog River, or anything that's in, in any of the districts, we make sure that we let um, the citizens know what projects are coming up, mm -hmm. and if they have any questions about the impact to their community, we definitely let them know. And then they can go to our website, we always let them know what our website is, that you go to the 2016splots.com, and, and that's actually linked to the county's um, website, and they can actually go in there and see what is it that's coming. Uh, we go ahead and we take pictures that you've seen up here, and every now and then we get a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one with businesses and let them know this is what's coming. Um, we've done a couple of doing business with the county, in the county. We're doing business with Douglasville, doing some business out there in Villa Rica, letting them know as business owners or as people that actually have a skill set, there are things that, that are in the spots that you can do locally. Because we're always trying to get local participation, minority participation. So we do reach out to uh, different people, especially on Bill Up and Fair Play for business owners to know that they can do construction, they can bid on certain projects, even if they are a subcontractor, they have that opportunity. So I want to let the board know that we are reaching out to the businesses out there to make sure that they are part of their own spots. Now are there any questions for me as far as communication or anything like that? Okay. Okay, thank All you right. board. Oh, thank you as well. Uh, Mr. Good. I also, I just wanted to close up, uh, wrap it up by just saying that uh, the Board of Commissioners are definitely on to something with these photographs and renderings and signage. Uh, that's important. Mm -hmm. That visibility piece is key because more people drive than they do come to our meetings. Mm -hmm. Then they're looking. So if we put big signs up, even with Deer Lake Park for the tennis courts, they're coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they said, wow. So please, mm -hmm. that piece is just very important to us. So we ask that you please go to a print shop, whatever, make it nice so these citizens can see what we're doing. We're doing a lot on paper, but we want to put it out there and push it before them. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to the next item, uh, business item. Well, we have a couple proclamations tomorrow. Uh, tab number four, five, and six, uh, we have a recognition of the state legislative delegation. Our state delegation will be here and be recognized, uh, and we will be uh, celebrating their success and what they do for Douglas County. Tab number five would be recognition of Representative Rogers Bruce's 17th annual family fun day catfish rodeo anniversary. <laughs> so we'll have that tomorrow. Our um, the proclamation is read, and we don't have a name yet, but I believe um, Commissioner Carthen will we read that for us. Okay, so Commissioner Carthen will read that for us tomorrow. And tab number six, proclaiming the month of April as National Child Abuse Prevention Month in Douglas County, and that'll be read by Katie Hilbert and Katrina Hartley. 
So next we'll move on to our business items. Tab number seven, authorization to approve task order 2019-2 for the 2019 summer groundwater sampling, laboratory analysis, and reporting to Georgia EPD as mandated at a cost of $27,675 and authorized and chairman to sign all related documents. Director Jenkins. Oh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome. Moving a little bit slow due to the pollen and the uh, cold weather. <laughs> all right. Uh, I know I come up here all the time, and the only thing I say is it's an unfunded mandate. It's <laughs> <is> not pleasant. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. Uh, <coughs> we've got 50 water wells at the landfill now, and <laughs> methane wells. <coughs> and we made Director it Jenkins, could you get by the mic so we can hear you? Okay. Just stand by the stand mic. Stand Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. I want to make sure the citizens can hear you. So we do the groundwater sampling and analysis twice a year. Mm -hmm. Every third year we have to go into it a little bit more in depth because of some contamination that is there. It's not uh, volatile, but they make it, make us do it again, that's what I'm trying to say. So this is the third year, that's the reason this price is 27. <coughs> it's a little bit more than normal. Uh, we're still getting close on the life of the landfill. Eight, eight years, we got a lot of options out there that we've not really got to yet, but we're going to have to. Uh, transfer station, you know the deal, we've seen it. Uh, temporary transfer station is now 25 years old. So I was kind of, uh, the county elected not to do a line landfill. So we did the C&D landfill and then we transferred out the household waste. That's who the contract with the public is and coincidentally it goes to Polk County which is a waste industries facility. So they just, uh, uh, that's it on $27,000. And then the other one is remaining capacity, which that's how you keep up, how much life you got left in the landfill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <coughs> I think it was $1,400. $1, how much? $1,400. $1,400. Mm -hmm. And uh, these things just keep rolling around. We've already had one consultant unfunded mandate which was the five-year plan review so it's happening as we speak uh, just got to make up our mind you know what direction we're going in in the future and Paul is going to say the same thing okay. uh, just the cost of being in Metro Atlanta mm -hmm. yes. any, questions? any questions or clarification any questions for the board? Yeah, I don't. Uh, and again, I, I I know that the landfill is probably not the the, the most popular um, um, function that um, obviously um, government provides to the citizens, but it's very very important, right? It, it it's 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 important. Uh, no different than the coroner and what it provides. It's it's important. Uh, that being said, um, uh, it's something that we have to proactively think through. Um, there is a life cycle. I know that's when our long-term capital plan, we got that major decision. You bought us some time, new price, and you and Madam Chair Bursky, all work together. Very pleased with that, that, that approach that got us a little bit more time, but we need to get there. Um, the cost that it takes to do this sampling is, is sort of, Madam Chair, it's day in the life. You got it, you got to go sample it, you got to go do it. I don't see any, I don't have a problem with the cost associated with this. It may be a little bit more, but you, you got to go, you, you need to know the truth. Go sample it. See what it is, it, and hopefully it's not contaminated, but whatever it is, it is what it is, but you can't run from reality. So I appreciate that you're consistent about bringing it forward. You're always delicate in how you say it, but it's like, it ain't like we're not going to do it. It's environmental, and it's obviously a mandate. So I just want to give you a short, so I appreciate you coming forward. Thank, Thank you so much. We do 600 transactions on Saturday at the landfill. Wow. wow. That's quite and that's why you'll see the cars backed up on Sigma Mountain Road both ways. Okay. Yeah. okay. 600. 600, that's quite a bit. Yep. Okay. Um, any questions again? Okay. Thank you so much, yes, uh, you. Director Jenkins. <laughs> Next, we'll move on because we covered to tab seven and eight. We'll move on to tab number nine, authorization to approve a Greystone Power right of way easement needed in order to install a transformer for the new sport lighting at Fair, Fair Play Park and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Dukes. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Yes, ma'am. This is just to give uh, Greystone the ability to set a transformer so we can get power to the new lights at the ball fields at Fairplay. Okay. Any stuff explanatory anything from the board? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll move on to tab number nine. Um, I'm sorry, tab number 10. Authorization to approve integrated constructions 
change of order number three and number four at a total cost of $18,783.36 for the boundary water concession stand press box construction as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Duke. Yes, ma'am. This is a change order necessary to meet the ADA requirements for the building. Uh, due to the grade, they had to extend the sidewalk, and they also had to put railings around the sidewalk. And uh, we also widened the entry walkway from the parking lot to the building. So that's the that's the changes. Okay. Any questions from the board? Question. Yeah, I'm encouraged to hear that, and I, I do appreciate the comments. Uh, I was talking to Commissioner Mitchell earlier. Um, about the need to be anticipatory in the whole point of the ADA um, um, and, and, and doing it the right way uh, on the front side. And yes, there may be a little bit more cost, but you have to be able to accommodate all citizens and it's not just one flavor. So uh, I'm glad you guys are on that um, and, and making sure that hopefully going forward, we'll, we'll put that design, that design element in so that we don't have to do a change order later for everything else is going forward. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Guider? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, did not the architect know that they would have to ad adhere to the Disabilities Act? I think there was some change in the elevation when they, when they uh, started the construction. Uh, and that's what caused the uh, sidewalk to be extended. Could you say something about being widened? That was the, uh, I called that actually, the uh, sidewalk was not wide enough. We have so many people coming and going. Uh, when they designed the sidewalk from the parking lot to the building, it wasn't wide enough for mommies and daddies to be, be dragging Junior back and forth from <laughs> and to the ball of fields. So uh, we extended that, I believe, to 10 feet wide so people wouldn't be walking and trampling on the grass. Good stuff. Well, um, I'm just not, and I don't know what kind of recourse we have if there's an architectural problem. And because uh, we pay to have an architect, a certified architect, to do these plans. And if they mess up somewhere, do we have any kind of recourse to go back to them and say, hey, you, you forgot to have this wide enough or whatever? Or I'd have to defer to Mr. Peacock. <laughs> Well, the question of the sidewalk is that we made the decision, they, they designed it to a standard, and we made the decision, the county made the decision to widen for the benefit of the citizens. So they, they designed it to a standard, which was appropriate, and we made the decision to actually increase the size. Well, I know that, but they are, all architects know what the code is. And, you know, whether it's the Disabilities Act or whether it's a local code or whatever. Well, they, and, they take the, I'm sorry. And they're supposed to draw that into the plans. <laughs> As Director uh, Duke said, though, the, the, there was a change in the actual layout, the elevation, the, the grade of the property that, again, made it necessary to make changes to okay. the design. So they don't have the topo when they do that. The topo changed. Basically, they, they knew what they thought they well, I'm sorry, they, they thought they knew what it was going to be, but then once all the grading was done, it actually had changed. Okay, um, okay so this is to adhere to the disabilities code uh, because of the change of the topo, mm -hmm. the grade. Mm -hmm. okay. And you're back. In answer to your question, yes, we do have the ability to go back to the to the uh, architect and say, a mistake, you made a mistake and you need to compensate us in some way for that mistake. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay thank you. <coughs> thank you, Director Peacock. All right, we'll move on to the next item, which is tab number 11, authorization for a water contract to integrate a construction incorporation for the demolition of the Deer Lake Park tennis courts and restroom facility at a cost of 49000 $760.18 as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight <coughs> Committee and for the Chairman to sign all related documents. Director Dukes? Yes, ma'am. This is a recommendation to accept the low quote for uh, integrated to dem uh, demolition of tennis courts, restrooms uh, at Deer Lake Park to make way for the new uh, tennis courts when their design is completed. Okay. All right, any questions from the board on this tennis court? Commissioner Guy? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Gary, uh, 
since this is uh, uh, construction and demolition material, does it go to our land bank? I believe that's where we're taking it, yes. And there's no way that we can just waive those fees to reduce the cost. That's over my pay grade there. The landfill's an enterprise fund. It's an enterprise fund. So but still, we don't. We have to control everything that is spent out there. <laughs> Can we not control the permits or the, the dumping fees? I just wonder. I don't know. But normally, what happens is uh, whichever department dumps out there, <laughs> they pay for. They pay the enterprise. So it's kind of government paying government. Yeah, it is, but. It's two separate funds, and if it was if it was all the same, it really wouldn't matter. But it is two separate funds. And do they recycle the fencing and things like that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I yield back. Okay. Any other questions about the the uh, part two? Okay. All right. We'll move on to tab number twelve: authorization to advertise for a public hearing for the American with Disabilities Care Transit Plan that is part of the Connect Douglas. Um, new fixed route bus service to be uh, held on uh, on May 7, 2019. Director Watson. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Uh, one of the components of the fixed route bus service that we're getting ready to initiate uh, is Americans with Disabilities uh, paratransit service for individuals with disabilities. Uh, we're required to have a plan that tells uh, the public how we're going to operate this paratransit service and that plan has to be approved by, by the Board of Commissioners. And part of that process is to hold a public hearing uh, on the plan. So that's what we're proposing, that's what we're asking uh, the Board to, to approve today is, is for us to authorize for that public hearing uh, on uh, May the 7th and then uh, after we hold that public hearing, if the board so chooses, is to go ahead and uh, approve that uh, paratransit plan. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the board commissioners regarding this? Pretty self explanatory. We'll move on to the next item. Number 13, authorization to adopt the resolution. Thank you, Director Watson. All right. Tab number 13, authorization to uh, adopt the resolution and award the bid for tax anticipation note 294, an annual rate of a certain percentage, and authorize the finance director to invest the proceeds in Georgia Fund 1 along with the accompanying uh, uh, resolution of Georgia Fund 1, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Director Peacocks? Yes, ma'am. I'm Peacock. going to defer to Director Hall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, we had a bid opening Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, we had four responses. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, First Citizens SunTrust, and PNC. Uh, the lowest bid was PNC, PNC at 2.25 percent, which I was pleasantly surprised. Last year we borrowed at 2.16 percent. So the interest rate on borrowing didn't go up quite as high as the interest rate on investing. Uh, so, um, we're asking uh, two things within this agenda item. Uh, well, let me tell you what the bids were. They were very competitive. Um, J.P. Morgan Chase was 2.45%. First Citizens Bank was 2.35%. SunTrust was 2.31%. And PNC, of course, was the 2.25%. Um, so, what we're asking is to award the bid do a resolution to award the bid of the tax anticipation note to PNC for an annual rate of 2.25 and also authorize the, me, the finance director, to invest the proceeds into Georgia Fund 1, which also has a resolution that has to be passed. Uh, right now, Georgia Fund 1's um, investment rate is 2.44%, and we anticipate that going up. Uh, saying that, this has been the first time probably in maybe eight years that we have the potential of having possible uh, positive arbitrage, which is not a bad thing. I know it sounds like a really fancy word and something horrible, but it's actually where arbitrage is where you're actually investing your proceeds mm -hmm. into a higher interest rate than what you're actually borrowing at. Mm -hmm. um, you are allowed by the IRS to keep those proceeds, the additional interest, the, the, um, the gap between the two. 
um, if you meet certain spin down requirements. We're unsure if we're going to meet those spin down requirements because we are borrowing a cushion of around 2.7 million because we have a lot of DOT projects. So just depending on how the spin down goes, we may have to rebate the additional positive arbitrage back to the IRS, but that's all it is. It's just a refund back to them. It's not a penalty. It's not interest. It's just saying, hey, we earned this amount of interest. We should have only could allowed to earn this amount of interest, therefore the difference goes rebated back to the IRS. <coughs> we'll keep track on that. I'll keep track and definitely come before y'all um, if we do have to pay that back or rebate it back to the IRS. Um, just like we did the past two years, we may be able to pay off the fans early. Uh, we paid them off in November last year. Um, so um, we may be able to do that this year, just we'll keep track on of our expenditures and our revenue uh, coming in. Um, and I believe I, okay. Oh, the other uh, the other thing, because we're in a market now with positive arbitrage, um, and looking at our debt policy, uh, we needed to amend our debt policy to include that we're monitoring our arbitrage, and we will calculate it, and we will send if if needed, we'll rebate it to the IRS. So this resolution also includes amending our debt policy. I spoke with uh, David Corbin, and we'll do an annual review of all of our policies, and we'll make sure that this is included within our updated debt policy as well. Any questions? Commissioner got a question. I'll go with you. Yes. Should it, uh, the item not say 18 million? It doesn't say it. Am I missing it? <laughs> I think the resolution does. <coughs> the resolution but, itself but, does. But since it's in the minutes, could we put the 18? Absolutely, absolutely. All right, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree. Again, we try to, you guys understand these are summary line items for you know, facilitating Madam Chair's agenda, but we, we should be more specific and just put them outside there. That just don't don't embed it and make us go digging deep and stuff. Just just call it what it is. It's okay. Um, I, I just I believe in transparency with her on that one. All right, um, well done. Um, again, um, the, um, the debt change, um, the debt policy change, um, obviously we're going to take up in our finance committee. So again, on this one, because of the timing of, of normally, uh, because we agreed that if a committee falls in between the meetings, we wouldn't pass any decisions, but this is a rule, like, guys, we need to get this money now. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're bringing simultaneously mm -hmm. before the Board of Commissioners, so we just let you know that we know what we're doing by doing that to give you a heads up. Um, I like the fact that, um, Director Hallman took a different approach this year. She got out ahead of time, <coughs> gave people time to respond, um, and I think it was very competitive. Um, I, I like what I'm, I'm sitting here like, yeah, that's what we're looking for. So well done on that. Um, as opposed to a shotgun, I think we got to, um, this was a very clean process, and, and so I'm sure I just want to just sort of highlight that, that we took our time, we got ahead of the curve, and so we got the best uh, possible offering. So mm -hmm. I ask for the Board of Commission support on this. I yield. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Mitchell. Yes, just just one. So again, uh, in in the uh, on item number thirteen, we will add the rate for whomever we your know, the recommendation is coming from and what that is, the amount and so on. So that way we will be clear uh, as to what they are. And the other part I want to add is you're right, great job, Chairman <coughs> Robinson stated. However, okay, so with that difference, just for clarity. There's not a difference in cost, meaning it's costing us to do business. It's if there's a, a win or a lose, meaning a plus or a minus, depending on how we spend, how we spend down, we'll determine that. So it's not a cost to us. So it won't be as though we spend uh, borrowing 16 mil, what was the number again? 18, 18 mil is going to cost us X because because <coughs> there's a good shot that we probably will make money from this based on the interest rate that we're getting. Right. So I just don't want to make sure it look. It, it sometimes sounds as though it's going to cost us, or is a it's a it's a negative to us based on the mere fact of we having to give back to the IRS of how we did how we did business. So help me so the public can kind of clearly get that. I think I can, but I think the public can clearly understand that part. Of it. Yeah, it's not it, it's not a cost. Right. Um, in the in, in that sense, what it is is we've earned interest that right. we may or may not be able to keep. Right. 
So it's just um, and that's what we're looking at. Right. Yes. It's, it's <coughs> just the earnings only, and it's not the entire earnings, it's right. only the spread mm -hmm. um, that we may not be able to keep and we have to rebate it back to the IRS. And the reason for that, Commissioner, is if that were not the case, governments would borrow money intentionally to make money. money. Yes, yes. And so the reason for the arbitrage rules is you can't borrow at one rate to reinvest at a higher rate without certain parameters being met. And this, uh, Jennifer knows because she's had to track this all the time. Um, but it would be nice to do but that. It's, that yeah, it's, it's a rebate. <laughs> it's a rebate. <laughs> it's a rebate. <laughs> it's a rebate. <laughs> it's a rebate. It's a rebate. I'm jokingly saying that, but it would be really nice to do that. Because the note is tax exempt for the, right. the um, exactly. investors. Exactly. Therefore, you know, that's one of the um, Things, stipulations that you have. Like I said, we may be able to keep it. I, I did speak with Commissioner Robinson about some thoughts that I had in regards to, you know, when we make our annual retirement um, payment, uh, we might be able to go ahead and make that a little bit earlier to show that. But I, I got to check with legal to make sure it make, meets the sniff test and, and everything. But I have been thinking of ideas of let's just say everything comes in just like we all. We don't have any hiccups then that might be something that we can pull out of our pocket and say, okay, right. let's just go ahead and make this payment. And I hopefully that you guys kind of come with that ideal factor, meaning if that's a, that's a good point, case in point, that if we could, mm -hmm. if we're legal in doing this, if we could definitely um, pay ahead mm -hmm. and, and use that as opposed to giving it back to us. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just so, FYI. Okay, but I yield back. Go ahead. Thank you. Commissioner Mitchell, that was a great, mm -hmm. great thought. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to the next item, um, tab number 14, authorization to award a contract to C.W. Matthews Contracting Company Incorporation for the 2019 SPA <laughs> and LMIG Road Resurfacing Program at a total cost of $5,918,980 and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. We went out to uh, bid on this in March, on March the 6th. We got the bids back in on April 5th. We got two bids from uh, E.R. Snell and one from C.W. Matthews. Uh, the C.W. Matthews is the lowest at $5,918,980. Um, obviously, either the two companies could do the work, so we're going to choose the lower of the two. Uh, and uh, we're asking that you allow us to award the bid to C.W. Matthews. And this is to do about 22 miles worth of repaving within the county. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Yes. W where will you start this year? What side of the... Lee Road. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have to do, yeah. I'm sorry on that one. Yes. Thank you. Where yes. Thank you. Lee Road. Thank you. Lee Road. Lee Thank you. Road. For the record. Yes. yes. We'll start with them first. That's so. I call this so uh, hard. <laughs> All right, well, we'll move on to the next item, tab number 15, authorization to award a contract to Yellowstone Landscape LLC for 2019 shoulder maintenance for a total cost of $312,540 and I'll authorize the chairman to sign our related documents. And guys, that's for the mowing. I said road shoulders. I was like, mm, it's in there, but Mark and I talked about it, but it's our mowing contract for the year. So I see, I see you, Commissioner Carthen, I'm like, okay. That's what I said initially. It's these rope shoulders. Okay, any questions? Um, first of all, I give that to you, uh, Director Peacock. We went out for bids in March, got the um, re response back at the end of March. The Yellowstone Landscape is our current vendor. Uh, they're the only ones that submitted a, a rebid or a bid for this mm -hmm. particular uh, <coughs> invitation. Uh, we, we're going to talk with them about maybe improving just a little bit some of the things they do, uh, but overall they, they have done a, a, a good job, uh, so we are recommending that we uh, renew the contract with Yellowstone. Okay. Thank you, uh, Director Peacock. What I would like to see in the future as we go forward, this contract bid it out a little earlier. It's time to cut the grass now. We're driving in this morning, I'm looking around saying it's time to start mowing, not approving contracts. So if we could start in January, we have six months to sleep because nothing is growing. But I would like to see us cutting in April because it's just, it's, it's high. There. So anyway, so next year. All right, Commissioner Carpenter, I believe you have something. I do. Um, and I guess we will go over this in our um, purchasing committee. Um, but to get more people involved in bidding on these contracts because what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're competitive. I don't know if 
you need to do an auditing of um, the, um, the bidders that we have within the system or look at how we need to get this out to those who can bid on it. But just to only have one person show up and then we just can only take theirs because they were the only ones to show up, it's just not good. We, not we uh, sent the bid to 30 vendors. Mm -hmm. Do we know if those bidders are active? Do we know uh, the these, last time they These are. Actually we, had, we did uh, validate, qualify these, if you will, to make sure that they are in, still in business. And, mm -hmm. and I can say that 99% of them are. So it just depends on the how busy they are at this time of the year, mm -hmm. whether they need the work or don't need the work. Uh, so uh, I, I don't. Uh, we can certainly <laughs> discuss it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I yield yeah. back. Thank you. Or question. Yeah, to piggyback on um, Chairman Carpenter purchasing, but I, I think that begins to whole point <coughs> one more time, whether it's transportation, whether it's roads. We're already into spring. What did we do during the dormant months to get ahead of this so that by the time you know, uh, you're right, um, for the most part, people are four. Like, I don't have the capacity, I can't ramp up, I gotta keep up what I'm doing. I mean, um, it, it, sometimes it's hard for certain firms at a certain level to scale, right? I mean, um, I get DOT, these are very seasoned people, they can go partner with other people to do roads and stuff, right? In, in a broader sense of, throughout the state. But at the local level, I mean, they just, I got enough boards and cutters, that's all I got, I can't take on the more capacity, but we're, we're, we're we somewhat, we're being hurt by uh, a delayed getting into the marketplace because we are competing for good vendors and so again here we are we're, we're on the back side of things and we're getting what's left over right because everybody else is already full because again everybody else got ahead of the curve so I, I think it's uh, something we'll work on as, as a committee which is to come out with a more a schedule that the administration will hold to that says no you have to get these out by January I mean if we've approved your budget Everybody's talking about we want the budget, we want the budget. So we've approved the budget, but then we still haven't got the bids out until four months later. But what do we do? What do we do during the dormant months? And we're just trying to recalibrate. We're, we're, let's just say the past is the past. I think to, to um, Madam Carson's point, there's an opportunity for us to be more efficient. So let's just let the past be the past, and let's just commit to moving forward so we can get them out in a more timely manner. So I yield. All right. Oh, oh Lord, been yielding. Okay, floor has been yielded. Any more questions? Yes. yes. <laughs> Please. Just one. Uh, how many um, cuttings? Three. Three, three right. cuttings. Okay. Could that be put in, <coughs> put in there? Uh, sure. Okay. Thank you. On the you back. And I Commissioner Mitchell? One. Yes. yes. And, and just in closing, um, uh, Chairman uh, Carthen. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to get it all together. Okay. <laughs> With that. Your, your, your input in all this is, is really uh, astute, meaning I'll, uh, definitely I'll follow your lead on this, but I agree, we need to get there early. I, I think we need to kind of, you know, get the bid out early. So during the winter months, then to try to do it when these guys are fat and full, and you say you sent out 90? No, I think you sent out 30. 30, over okay, 30. 30. Over 30 uh, vendors possibility to even bid on this and you only get one return, that that kind of shocks me to say what was in the RFP? I mean, what was all there? And to, I, I don't know if it just cut grass and you get a dollar per square feet, I don't know. But whatever it is, it, it appears that it wasn't attractive enough to, to kind of get this done. So with that, I mean, we're in the cutting season now. we got to get it cut, so let's, let's move forward. However, I think to be proactive, let's go ahead and design it, create it, and what that looks like for the next time around in the bid. So we are ahead of the curve, and we know what that is. So I'm assuming with your committee, I know you guys have put that together so we can be ready uh, this time around for the next alley. It won't, this won't be the return, it'll be okay. something a whole lot better. Okay, thank you very much. I yield that. All right, anything else? No, that's it. All right, Madam Prof, you good? I'm good. Okay, all right, we're gonna move forward. The floor has been yielded. I'm gonna facilitate into the next one. Sixteen. Perfect. Sixteen. Go ahead. Are you Thank you so much. Tab number sixteen. Wow, we just on sixteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Authorization to award a renewal contract to CBM Atlanta Corporation for General Janitorial 
and carpet cleaning services at the Douglas County Courthouse for an annual cost of $39,638.30. And authorize the chairman to sign our related documents to Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. This was a rebid uh, that uh, we sent out on uh, March the 20th, I'm sorry, in February 19th, we sent it out. We received our bids back on March the 22nd. There were five bids received uh, from American Facility Services for $72,804, from SKB Facilities and Maintenance for $143,921.52, ICS Incorporated $65,400, CBM Atlanta $79,638.30, and SNA Express Trans $102,000. Uh, this was uh, um, taken and discussed in our uh, Purchasing Oversight Committee. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, this was, this was a request for proposal, so there was more than just price. There were qualifications uh, of the firms that actually went in, into the decision. Um, and the uh, recommendation is that we uh, do award the contract again to CBM Atlanta for $79,638.30. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? All right, Commissioner Geiger. Just one clarification. This same company that had it last year? This is the same company that's doing it today. Now. Okay. Yes, All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, Commissioner Geiger. We'll move on to tab number 17, resolution of the Douglas <coughs> County Board of Commissioners regarding county issued uh, purchasing and or credit cards to designate certain Douglas County elected officials to receive a county-issued credit card and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. Uh, back in, uh, during the 2015 legislative session, the General Assembly adopted House Bill 192, <coughs> which requires that elected officials uh, that uh, are assigned uh, county credit cards uh, must sign a um, affidavit uh, saying they understand the, uh, the how they could use that credit card and how they can't use the credit card. Uh, initially, when the, res the, the original resolution was passed, we said that uh, the Sheriff's Department, the sh I'm sorry, the Sheriff, the DA, the Tax Commissioner, and the Chairman would be assigned cards. This resolution now expands that so that District Commission, uh, County Commission number one, Commissioner District one, Commissioner District two, Commissioner District three, and Commissioner District four will now be uh, also given the ability to have a county issued credit card after they sign their life. <laughs> okay, any questions from the uh, Board of Commissioners? Sure. <coughs> uh, Robinson, yeah. I, I just want to clarify a couple, a couple of things. Um, so, a, a, a credit card is being, uh, um, a financial tool is being issued to uh, a new set of elected officials. Uh, and I'm not saying we need to go beyond that, but it, it should be any elected official per se, right? Um, each elected official has an office that they're responsible for, but it's um, the, the work that they do. But I understand what this one is, so it's just one more time, so if somebody else that's elected that has an office, if they ask, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a, not to, should we expand it, just be all elected. An office is an office. But okay, put that to the side. So right now it's the, the district commission. <coughs> all right, fine. Um, secondly with that is that what will be the source in which this funding, uh, this mechanism is applied against? Um, it's my understanding that this is not a conversation in which we're taking up an expense account. That's a different conversation, different day. Uh, and the, uh, again, I'm okay if the board officials want to go there, but this is, so um, if you have an amount, where's that being pulled from? And it's my understanding that's coming out of what, contingency uh, or a 190 or something that's, um, that, that is a department associated with the board of commissioners. And I, I, I want to clarify, Mark, Ken, I, I need y'all to pay attention to this one. Where is this source? <laughs> That this money would, all right, so I got a credit card and I go buy a subscription to the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Let's take the conversation. Where is that being applied to? It's, it's, and we're saying that the expense account, this is not an expense account conversation. It's not. So that money that's being, that card 
is being charged to get something, and Jennifer, I'm not putting you on spot, this is just more of a, it's gonna be applied to get something. What is that source, 190, 110? Does the Board of Commissioners, the yep. District Commissioners have an actual mm -hmm. sub-account that says that there's a, a, a budget, or is it, just to clarify, just so we- Most of the time it would be 110. What happens is when, whatever, whenever the purchase is made, if there's a purchase made, then you would take your receipt, and that would be returned in Normally it goes to yes. Sherry. That's correct. Yes, um, other departments turn theirs into Jessica. But you turn that receipt in, so then that receipt, she'll make a note on there and submit the requisition for the credit card. So everything gets tagged to the correct line out okay. in 110. All right. So, all right, so that, that's the first one. So 110, guys, we're all on the same page. 110. My second question is um, for travel. Hotel, tolls, whatever you you know, all that will be charged against this 110. Is that accurate? I just want to confirm it. Maybe already obvious. Yes. It's in the policy. I want to say it. Jennifer, is that true? That is correct. Everything, all mileage, all food, all travel, all room and what, what am I missing, Henry? Room and board. You, you, you know, traveler. Okay. All right. All those things associated with that. Again, this is not an expense account conversation. This is 110 conversation. All right, um, so we're separating the two. Um, am I missing anything else, guys? I just want to make sure that, that is, we're clear on this resolution we're about to pass and that the policies line up with that. It is not, staff will say, well, our policy isn't that way. Well, I want to make sure it's clear that there's a distinct, that we can't make this up as we go. And, and, and one of the things you would think that, you would think that the Board of Commissioners would actually have this tool, right? But we, we come from an era that was a very autocratic, um, probably, time of day where everything was concentrated, right? They had to have, it was a control mechanism that I think that we've sort of outgrown probably 10, 20 years. Uh, we really probably should, you know, my mother had credit cards back in, in, in the 80s when she worked for the Department of, you know, of Education, right? This, these tools are old and I, I think we're, we're growing up now where we know the, the understanding of how to use these, these, these financial mechanisms. But I, I was asked like, well, why are y'all, y'all don't have credit cards? And it was just, it was just, it was just the age in which we lived in. It was very, you know, only certain elite elected. To, um, it was sort of like a, a, a you know, a club, like oh, only y'all get the cards. But there was other people that had offices that weren't empowered to do so. And I appreciate this administration um, expanding the empowerment to allow us to be able to do what we need to do, versus you know, staff that goes home and we we're, we're, we can't facilitate because we're usually twenty four seven, right? There's nothing for us to get something on a Saturday at Beeson World on Sunday. But if we have to do something, we got it. Like that, that's not very uh, progressive. So I appreciate that. Um, but again, I think I'm clear on what this is. I wanted to make sure that our commissions were clear on where the source was coming from, and I yield. Commissioner Okay, I didn't know what 110 is. You're saying it's BOC, BOC. but it's my understanding it went against our three hundred dollar uh, base expense. It depends on what the expense is. This is, is. giving us additional uh, funds to use. Is it not? Let me try to what address that yeah. if I can. <clears throat> and I don't know what fund it comes out of, so separate yeah. from the fund, <laughs> there's three different things going on, and the three different things going on are we're not talking about the $300 monthly expense. We're not talking about the outside county expenses. But what we are talking about, though, is th the charge has to be something that is either budgeted or approved by this board. You can't, there's not unlimited discretion to use the card any way we want to. It has to be something that's, that's in furtherance of board activities. Now, that, for instance, and, and I, I don't want to be careful about going into for instance, because I don't know how many for instance there are. Aside from the $300 monthly expense, which this could be used to expend money for those things, even if it's annualized, like we talked about in the last meeting. If you take the 300 and multiply it by 12 and say it's 3,600 for an annual expense, it could be used for those things. It could be used for outside activities that, you know, going to ACCG conference and paying for a hotel room, paying for whatever's associated with that conference. Mm -hmm. And then the category is what? What else can it be used for? And that part requires some board direction on how those activities are. 
if it's not a pre-approved <coughs> budget item, it's not a pre-approved or approved expense, then what? What is it? I'm not sure that this addresses that third it element that Commissioner Robinson's talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm not. Well, I, I, it was all, it was my uh, understanding from the very get-go, it was just to be used, just like we turn in receipts now, we would just turn in our, you know, uh, they would pay the bill within that $300. But you still need to turn in your because receipt. Because if we go beyond that, then it seems like we're circumventing the other law, the $300. Well, there's two different things. One, this was, a, as I understood, it was a convenience factor. Other than factor. Uh, hotels and stuff, uh, which is not local. Well, remember, you're outside the county expense, as long as it's approved by the board, is 100%. So when you go into a conference, for instance, the cost of that can be on this card because it's approved and it's 100% outside of Douglas County. Mm -hmm. Inside of Douglas County, is 300 a month. It's not the statute, the, the local legislation doesn't prescribe whether it's 300 or you analyze it or what. My only caveat is, is if you get cut from the year, it has to be a prorated refund back to the county. In other words, if you spend 3,600 on day two of that administrative year fiscal cycle and you remove from office, die 30 days later, you, right. you, that, there's some money that's got to come back. Understood. But, what this is not talking about, the expenses are related to this credit card. We can't get around that. Mm -hmm. There is no individual decision as to how this money is spent. But one thing I said at the last meeting <coughs> was this, the, you know, when, if the budgeted amount for the commissioners to have district town hall meetings is in the budget and is approved by this government, mm -hmm. that's an expense of the county. That's not an individual expense of the district commissioner. So. However that's paid, I don't really care because I think that's an expense of operating government as opposed to, I don't know where it came from that the individual commissioner has to pay for hosting a district commission if the board is going to have them across the board throughout the year. So that would be an expense that would go on here that would arguably not be counted towards that $300 because it's a budgeted approved county expenses. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I'm yeah. clear. But what yeah. if I, okay, say you order a bunch of things that you want to hand out uh, with your name on it and everything, is that? Well, well listen, here, here's how you spend, here's the, here's the, the fine line that you have to walk on that. Uh, if it's campaigning, you can't spend government funds on campaigning. But letting your citizens know how to reach their district commissioner is a communication mm -hmm. tool. And that is an expense that either a commissioner can decide I'm gonna spend my three hundred dollars to give out pens so people know how to call but that me. Goes or, against the three hundred dollars. Well, unless the board says across the board we're gonna budget this right. communication expense, then it's a county expense for having done it. In other words, <laughs> we we're, we're gonna buy I don't know, I'm going to make up something. Who, who, who does this for us? Where's Rick? Well, let, let's say that you're, you know, the, the, the putting a brochure out that we're going to have these town hall meet, this town hall meeting in District 2 or 3 or 4. That expense is a communication expense of the county. It shouldn't fall on the individual uh, commissioner to pay that expense if it's approved in the budget and that's what y'all's plan is across the board. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. But what you couldn't do is use the credit card to go have a campaign rally at Deer Lake Park or, or Winston and hand out t-shirts, Bo Henry Mitchell or Bo whoever. That, that would be, yeah. And I'm not talking, I use Henry because he's up here smiling, so I just use anybody. Well, I, I just really thought that it just went Against your three hundred dollars. Well, the three hundred dollars, yeah, the three hundred dollars is supposed to be an incidental expense. It's supposed to be things that are incurred that it shouldn't cost you to be a district commissioner. You see what I'm saying? Other than the election itself, it shouldn't cost you to. It's an incidental expense. It's a local expense. If that makes sense. And the problem is nobody's ever really asked the question: What does this really mean? Right. And I think. Prior administrations just toss on the individual commissioners. Well, theoretically, I guess if you adopt that, you could, but I don't think that's what is intended. So your three hundred dollar expense to answer your question, have you yield back? I don't want to take. Well, uh, there's a lot of confusion. I would like this to be taken out of the consent agenda. 
Okay. okay. Well, on the confusion, so you know, the three hundred dollars that you use every month that can be used out of the car, but you just have to have your receipts. Your hotel expenses and mm -hmm. all those things are done in advance. Right. It's just for extenuating circumstances when you get up to the desk and they say, guess what, you it's not paid for. Then you have an emergency away out of it. So it's not that you're going to be paid for all your hotel rooms out of that. But this will cover the cost for your $300 expenses, which I feel wholeheartedly you shouldn't be spending out of your pocket to bring back for receipts. You may not have that $300 that much for us to do that. And then that allows you for your, if, you, if you're going to have, you may not use it. You may not decide to have it. Well, yeah. well, if you, 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 well, you like to you sit there and you don't use it, but I'm not voting against it. I have it in my purse in case there's an emergency. And I don't want to say I don't want it. I just say, you know what, this is just in the case. I don't even use mine. I had $26 on it last year. So with that being said, we're going to move on and we'll, uh, Commissioner Guy, you still want it on out of it? We'll pull it out. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Madam Chair, we're only adding one word uh, under the resolve section, the word also, so that uh, the, the references to the prior people that were already awarded credit cards in the resolve section were, were, were saying the following those can elect officials okay. to also receive a county issued card because some already have it pursuant to the old resolution. Yes. Okay. And Mark knows where that transition is. Commissioner Mitchell, I think yes. we'll move on. I, I, just, I, just for clarity, so we're saying all elected officials or just making the adjustment for the, the uh, Board of Commissioners. So this one is only this for commissioners. Yeah, only commissioners. Yeah, commissioners. Commission. Commission. But that's up to the board or what? My thoughts are, I mean, as Vice Chair stated, I mean, I don't want to speak for my, I think it only makes sense that it's this one time we do it and be done with it versus trying to come back and now does the tax commissioner get one or vice versa and I'm just only using hypothetical does the tax commissioner get one versus the sheriff he already yeah they're already, I know, yeah, I know. okay I'm, I'm just being hypothetical so oh. from from the elected officials versus the board of commissioners only now if they choose not to have a a, a, a credit card then yeah. that's their prerogative mm -hmm. but at least that is a part of their duties and or responsibilities as to what they do now just it, it makes sense to just say it's across the board versus so all elected, elected officials. All uh, county elected officials. County elected officials. Yeah. All mm -hmm. county elected officials. Yes, yeah, so we don't want to give the city one. Uh, no, not, the, not, not, well, the not the state, though. Yeah. No, I got you. No, no, In no, other words, we're, we're talking about, I'm just going through my mind, we're talking about <laughs> the chief magistrate, yes. the solicitor general, the judges of the correct. state court. That's correct. Uh, probate court, I believe, is an yes. elected official. Mm -hmm. The coroner. Yes, yes. I'm going if, through the list. If she is elected, yeah. then okay. If you are, if you are, well, and here's, here's, and just so y'all know, I'm talking through my mind. You're, you're considered a county elected official if you qualify through the local party That's apparatus. Right. If you have to qualify to state capital or secretary of state, you're considered a state elected official. That's correct. Right. So we have some overlap. Yes. But we're talking about people that qualify locally, run for That's office. Correct. And get elected to county seats. State that. Okay. Is that what I understand everybody yes. saying? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. And the other part about receipts, I, I think, I don't know if it needs to be stated, but we all make sure that it's clear that receipts will be the verifier, the, the, the qualifier, I guess. Whether you buy pencils, pens, drive a cab, whatever it is. Well, I, I think, yeah, I think, and I may be wrong about the policy, but Bill, hear me on this. Because a credit card receipt is just going to have a line item in some place in San Mateo, <coughs> California, and who knows what that is, right. it's got to also accompany the documentation behind it, because reason. otherwise the credit card won't show anything. Yeah. It, and it, they the, do now. Today's, yeah. the today's credit cards will show it, but I still think a, 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 they need to be accompanied with a receipt. And it's just a, my is that how policy works? That is part of the policy. It says that receipts, invoices, and other supporting documentation of all purchases okay. made with a county purchasing card or credit card shall be obtained and maintained by the authorized county elected official for five years or as otherwise provided by the county's retention policy. And okay. what staff will do is when you turn in the, the uh, receipt, so they will make sure that mm -hmm. they know exactly what the receipt was for if mm -hmm. there's any question, and then they'll make sure it gets charged. The and it has to balance. Your out. receipts mm -hmm. have yeah. to balance yeah. the so 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 the transaction. I'm only I'm only the other part of this question is what if we don't? So if we don't turn in the receipt, swipe the credit card, what happens then? Doesn't get paid. Then doesn't get paid. It doesn't get paid. It's already paid because it's already the, the card is already 
paid for it, I guess. Am I uh, correct? The car's not, the car, the, the reimbursement yeah, comes out of that account, but the car is linked to the individual signed the card, right? We have to enter a requisition every month for, to pay for, for the bill, credit card bill. So if all the paperwork's not included with the, the requisition, it won't make it through the system so it won't get paid. So if that one, my coffee conversation, donuts doesn't make it to the mm -hmm. receipt, you'll pay all others and, and mm -hmm. exclude no. that. So, and so, okay. So It'll hold so, up the entire payment. So hold up the entire payment for that month or that time frame of what we deal with. Is that clear in the in what we're stating? Oh, it's, it, it doesn't get that specific. It just says that you have to turn in your receipts. <coughs> right. So, uh, the, the problem you run into is okay. this. You got the policy and then you have the fiduciary responsibility the chief financial officer. Great. She can't pay anything that she can't audit and prove. And so she, if, if she can't hit the go button unless it meets her criteria as a fiduciary for releasing taxpayer funds to pay it. So it, it's separate from this policy. There's an overlay of whatever finance requires in order to hit the go button. Does yeah. that make sense? Well, I, I get it. I'm just making sure I'm, I'm talking out loud so everybody else is going. Right. And that is if, if she don't get January's payments or receipts rather, and <coughs> will December not get paid? Well, and the other issue, and I guess you, you want to answer that, Jennifer? Yeah, we, need, we have to have all the, what was stated, all the invoices, the receipts, receipts attached uh, to the credit card bill for the bill to be paid. Right. But, but this is my question. I think you missed my good point. Right? Okay. If, if January receipts wasn't turned in, do, does that stop December's, uh, if everything was turned in in December, does that stop the payment on December because you didn't get all of January. I mean, is it monthly? Is it it's monthly? It's paid monthly. It's paid monthly. It's just like a regular. Okay. 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 And the penalty, okay. and the penalty, Commissioner uh, Mitchell, is this: the policy, which is not an ordinance, it's a policy, would allow for suspension of the credit card if you don't comply with the policy by turning in whatever they need. Does so that make sense? Yes. Going so forward, it, it can yes. be so, suspended. So it could be suspended and because of January's non-compliance. Okay. Secondly. Okay. Not only can it be suspended, mm -hmm. this policy doesn't override other state laws regarding whether or not it can be prosecuted for other crimes. And I'm only saying this out loud so everybody can kind of right. hear what, what the requirements are so we won't get the misconception that it's okay to just kind of use this and do this and not, you know, apply to our rules. Right. Okay. All right. I'll give you back. Okay. Thank you so much, okay. Commissioner Mitchell. And also, uh, if you could, uh, Director Peacock. I think we could, and also I think we could write some language in there that says that uh, elected this credit card for elected official is an, uh, for elected officials is an option, not a requirement. Because I want them to just make sure yeah. it's an option, not a requirement. Right. And then I know that kind of uh, addresses Commissioner Guyver's concern as well. She doesn't have to get one. No. Right. So uh, did you hear? Did you hear me? Commission, I mean, uh, directly. Yes, ma'am, we have it. It's an option, not a requirement. We have so okay. Bill will have the resolve section say also, and then. Add the word also, and then just list the as an op uh, option. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 We'll move on to the next item. Tab number 18. Uh, authorization to approve an agreement to purchase real estate for temporary easement of 01509250031, located on Highway 5 in connection with the John West and Wright Star Road intersection improvement <coughs> project to be funded by the 2016 SPLOS funds and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentini. Yes, uh, good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, this is one of the last remaining items, uh, parcels that we need to obtain to move that project, uh, bid it out for construction. Okay, any questions? Uh, Commissioner Guyton. What do you mean located on Highway 5? The, uh, the parcel uh, is undeveloped and it is a very large parcel and it fronts on two roads all the way up to Highway 5 as well. So uh, in our records at the, commission, uh, at the uh, tax commission, it bears a zero Highway 5 tag, <coughs> but it is undeveloped. You're saying there's a parcel that comes off of uh, Bright Star Road? Bright Star Road. It goes all the way. Yes, ma'am. And because we're taking a piece of that, correct, we have to list it this way. <laughs> we have to list it with the with the legal had a long address. Road there, because <laughs> there's a big there's a big gap there. It is. 
I double checked it. All right. I give back. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to the next one. Uh, tab number uh, 19, authorization to approve an agreement to the purchase real estate for right of way and easements in parcel 015-8025-0048 located at 2960 Bright Star Road in connection with the John West and Bright Star Road intersection improvement project. Um, I got something new here. To fund the 2016 SPAS, to be funded with 2016 uh, SPAS <coughs> and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents, Director Valentin again. Yes, ma'am. This is uh, another parcel, uh, and uh, after this one, uh, there's only one remaining, and uh, that will put us in position to be able to get the project for construction. <coughs> Okay, any other what was your last comment? Could you repeat your comment? Uh, I said that uh, there's one parcel remaining after this one, and once we obtain that one, we'll be able to bid the project for construction. Okay. Okay. All right, and then we'll move to the last one. Last but not least, tab number 20, authorization to, ad to adjust compensation for the Douglas County DOT field staff to make salaries more competitive, improve employee retention, and help attract qualified applicants as recommended by the Transportation Committee, <coughs> and to amend the budget. Uh, Director Valentin, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we've experienced over the last year and a half, at least, uh, difficulty in keeping the positions, the field positions, uh, uh, equipment operators, laborers, technicians, um, field, uh, because there is such competition out there. And uh, uh, many of those positions, well, fortunately, too many of them, the pay rate is just not competitive. It is actually, uh, we're losing people to the likes of Walmart and other retail <coughs> service establishments. So this, this uh, in order for us to be able to maintain the staff and in recognition of the hard work that, that they have been doing, uh, over the last uh, several years uh, and attract uh, qualified applicants. Uh, we, uh, I'm asking that you allow us to bring the salaries more competitive with the region. The, uh, many of the um, applicants, the starting rate is around the, uh, slightly under $12 an hour and that is just not competitive anymore. Uh, we have, when we did an analysis of the remaining staff, we found that um, that the staff that we do have that's been here uh, a while, several years or perhaps many of them 15, 20 years, have been the higher paid equipment operator positions. But we're starting to lose those uh, to the competition, including uh, a lot of these contractors that we're trying to get to do work for us, paving and, and otherwise. Uh, it's just a difficult uh, uh, situation out there with uh, keeping staff and this would allow us to uh, make the salaries more competitive and hopefully uh, be able to get more work done in-house. Okay. Uh, Director Valentin, if you could speak to what you've done within your existing budgets to allow to not be such a, a <coughs> drastic impact this year yes. and then what we need to do going forward. Yes. Uh, we have we have gone through and and uh, in your packets and I, I won't get into too much detail unless you have specific questions but in your packets there was information about how um, we establish what the needs were to be able to accommodate this uh, pay adjustment again for field staff in particular and um, we found that many, uh, that uh, several of the positions that had gone vacant, uh, we took uh, those savings and put it towards the total cost. And so it, it, it uh, balances out to about an, an additional 35,000, a little under 35,000 uh, to, uh, to do the adjustment effective uh, uh, April 27th of this year for the rest of the year. And uh, the rest would come from um, from salary savings. Commissioner Guy, I know you have a question. Yes, um, we paid Evergreen. Was it Evergreen? Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago to do a salary study, mm -hmm. and uh, wasn't the department head supposed to go over and and 
make uh, verbal uh, adjustments or recommendations to Evergreen about this? And uh, how many field staff do you have? We have uh, 33 field decisions. You have 33 people that are making less than... No, no, not all are making less than... There, many of them are making less than 15 an hour, but some are making less than 12 an hour. So Evergreen didn't address your department? Unfortunately, that was BM. Um, so I don't know what discussions went into uh, that exercise. However, the recommendations, the recommendation from that uh, uh, study just didn't get us up to where we need to be uh, based on the, the way the economy and the competition is in this area. But, you know, this is, mid, this is beginning a new year. Did you have this in your budget request, BIRs or whatever, last year? We've or far this year? We've been having discussions about this for a while. It was not included as a BIR. Uh, however, uh, it's gotten to the point where, uh, for example, right now over 50% of our staff is either new or in a new position because of the high turnover rate. And uh, so, we are trying to address that issue because we, we can't always rely on being able to get a, a, a contractor in to do the work uh, because of the premium that we would have to pay. So it was not a BIR last year, but we've been having discussions about this for a while, and uh, we've had discussion at the committee level for several months. But if, if someone is new, then they came on board knowing what the pay was. And I, I think we're scheduled for another 2.5% mid-year this year. Um, so they would get, if this went through now, they would get this, plus they'd get 2.5% mid-year. So uh, it just keeps domino. And, uh, and it's not just your department. We've had several people come before us after our budget, we might as well throw our budget out the door because we're not sticking to it. <laughs> and it, it, things like this doesn't just affect this year, it affects from here to eternity. Uh, uh, I don't like the timing of this at all. This should have been addressed either in the budget process or um, when Evergreen was here, we I don't know what we paid them, but it was several thousand dollars to do a study, and uh, this should have come up during that process by somebody. I don't know who, uh, but somebody should have brought this up, especially if it was people making $12 an hour. Uh, but are you talking about someone that holds a flag, or you, uh, uh, you you're talking about Equipment operators. We're talking ab about both. And, and in fact, uh, to your point, uh, Commissioner, we've had uh, new hires that we advertise go through the process and we offer them the job and they accept the job and then they don't show up on day one because in the meanwhile, they got an offer from somebody else making three, four dollars more an hour. So we're having a tough time filling uh, the positions the problem has been there for many years. The issue is the circumstances have changed. Uh, things are a lot more competitive now. And if we do not address... Well, it's not just your, your department that's competitive. It's every department. It's Understood. What I'm saying is the timing uh, is what it does to our budget. <laughs> um, because the, the purpose of a budget is to know what you got to spend and based on estimated revenues. And we don't... Um, it's just bad timing for something like this. I, uh, I hate that you're having, you're talking about 35 employees. That's, that's a lot of, um, but you're talking mm -hmm. about $35,000. Correct. That's for this year. For this year. Just for the rest of this year? For the rest of this year. But are you uh, including the 2.5% we're going to get mid-year? That is not included on here. That would be in addition. When, when we estimated where 
uh, what it would take to get them competitive, we took into account the fact that there would be uh, an increment uh, in July. Thank or whenever that is. I like to stick to the budgets and everybody knows that. <laughs> so uh, I've said what I've got to say, but I yield back. Okay, thank you so much for your support. Uh, I see you, Vice Chair, but I believe, please. So you go for did you have anything? Oh, I believe you did look at me. Yes. Um, my question to you, Miguel, is the $34,000, is this <coughs> going to bring up the ones that are just coming on and it won't be in conflict with who is already there? Because one of the things you don't want is for who's coming on to be paid just as much as the people who have been there. It, this, this would address the lower paid employees and it would also address the compression uh, that would occur. So both. So, both. so both. those who are there would yes. also get yes. an increase. Okay, and I'm, I'm in cahoots with, <laughs> I, 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 no, no we, I'm in agreement, no collusion, no collusion, but I, I am in agreement that, you know, when, when, when this is implemented, it moves the budget for next year up a notch too. So will it move it for everybody else's department? Because I mean, fire, fire and EMS has the same, you know, problem parts and wrecks has the same problem you know it's everything is, is competitive and so you know government the one thing that we do that that um, you know private entities don't do is we pay benefits that others don't absorb and so when we are talking to those people who are coming if we get like press that you know we, we, we pay in other ways that um, you know, private companies, and I know someone don't pay for it. I don't pay for that. So, you know, I don't pay for you to get the uh, un so Understood. Understood, Commissioner. And, and to your point, um, we looked at adjoining uh, counties that mm -hmm. were losing staff to. And uh, they've had to deal with this. And their, their salaries are a lot more competitive. Even with this increase, it would not put us on a par with them. This is just to get us in the ballpark. Back. Thank you for your okay. Vice Trevor Ross. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Chairman of Transportation, this is something we've looked at, at a, a couple of times. Um, and, you know, again, let's, let's give uh, Miguel some, some latitude and some credit. He had to get his mind around an operation that commands 50% of our splost. It's one of the biggest and most expensive line items. It is what it is, right? So he had to get his mind around, okay, what, what hand did I get dealt? No number two, no number three. Uh, we're still operating in 2008 limits. We didn't really increase anything, but yet we're, we have this expectation, and this is what I pushed on in the committee, is that, okay, why, why can't I get the sidewalks? Why, why can't I get, you know, it was always this strategy, do I outsource it or can I in-house it? And it's about quality. And again, you're right. I mean, I get, you, you can advocate for everybody in every department, all 64 functional, all, the service delivery is what, 64 departments, 64 functions? One more time, $10 need, $1. And you gotta set priorities. And if you're saying that transportation being the biggest in the SPLOS, in the, in the biggest line item is a priority, you, and you're saying that as part of that, you can't outsource everything that it must be done internally. You must commensurately, uh, staff against that if that's part of the strategy else you you're not going to get there and then we're going to take them hits in them town halls and stuff and we run our mouths how great look at our pictures look at our pictures look at our pictures and they're like okay what's taking y'all so long it don't take that long to do a sidewalk it don't take that long now again outsource it all or in-house take your pick and it's a blended strategy so i'm i'm listening and he's right i mean we, we deal with this with the sheriff we had to deal with this offline back when we got him his seven and a half percent. Yeah, we knew that was it, nothing's ever unanimous. There's always going to be a yes and no, no, yes. That that's fine. But what was the priority, right? What was the priority? Right now, it is competitive. I mean, you're, you're right. I mean, I come in. I back during the recession, we could offer benefits like you should just be happy to get a job because nobody was getting paid. Now there's been an expansion of the economy, and so uh, there's cash going around. Like, oh, I can work for you two weeks, two months, and I'm out. And I can go next door. It's easier now. We can't, like, we, we got to be careful on how we're looking at what the, the options that they have. 
So he's in a rock and a hard spot because he has to deliver against the things that he's committed to that we said he can go do regarding in-house. But we want to empower him to do it, but we want him to, to manage expectations. Where are we at with intersections? Where are we at with this? And it's like, and not, not, I got you on this, Miguel. In other words, I understand where you're coming from. You can't put that expectation on him and then you don't give him the resources that's necessary to get it done. And you see it bleeding out the back door, but that's for all the departments. I get it. Miguel just happened to come to the table right now. So don't, for any department director, never fear coming and advocating for the interests of your department. Right? I mean, Miguel just happens to be here, so I don't think he should be punished for bringing that forward. Advocate for your interests. And it's up to the Board of Commissioners collectively go to their corners and, and, and make a vote on whether or not they believe that this should be acknowledged. But I, I, I don't want to lose that point. Um, we're, we're saying that, we, we, that this is important, but yet we're not funding it um, to the extent that it needs to be. So I just want to leave that to them, Chair. It was time. We need to bring it forward, and the Board of Commissioners need to cast their respective votes. Okay. I do. Okay. Commissioner Carthen. So my question to you, Miguel, is some of the needs that we have, let's say mowing, and we just did, we just outsourced it. So are you saying that some of that would need to be outsourced if your people were making the amount of money that they need to make? Uh, we, would, we would be in position to to have more qualified staff and be able to do more, our efficiencies would be increased. So for example, uh, take the resurfacing contract mm -hmm. that, that uh, is on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Some of those roads, as and I don't want to get too deep into that discussion because <laughs> right. that's, uh, that's a slippery slope there, but mm -hmm. uh, some of those roads have been done in-house mm -hmm. uh, or, or in, the, in the past, the Yelmig roads were being done in house. If we had the, the the if we were fully staffed with qualified people, we would be able to deliver on more roads. We would pay, be able to pave more roads in house than so we wouldn't need to outsource as much. So so essentially going forward, for example, last week we began <coughs> paving the remaining roads from two thousand eighteen. We would be able to complete that list and do additional roads that are not on any list right now because we not only do we address programs and projects such as LMIG or SPLOS, but we do extensive in-house maintenance. So this will provide that capability to do more maintenance <coughs> in terms of resurfacing, addressing potholes a lot quicker, addressing signage, all of the maintenance that goes on that we are obligated to do, uh, this would put us in position to be able to handle that a lot more efficiency, uh, efficiently. Okay. Thank you. I do. I'm just going to wrap up. Okay. Um, Miguel, I'm not saying that you don't need to do this. I'm saying the time and why why did why was it included in your 2019 budget request? That's what I'm saying. Uh, that way we would have had time, we would have had time to wrap our heads around it too and and come up with some kind of solution. <coughs> but uh, <coughs> you understand when we set a budget, we're we're basing uh, that budget against the revenues that we anticipate getting. We don't know those revenues yet, and um, if anything can happen. But I'm just saying every department should include this in the budget process so that we know what our expenditures are for the year. Uh, we don't know what the revenues will be, but we es we estimate that on history. But um, we have to have these figures during the budget process. I've said that to other departments too, and um, and that is my uh, reluctance on this is uh, the timing. It's all about the timing. So I yield back. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Guy, we're going to move on. Thank you so much, Director uh, Valentin. We have the approval of the minutes tomorrow, tab 21 through 25, Board of Commissioners. Please take a look at these expenses. 
and then we will go from, uh, we will approve accordingly tomorrow uh, based on the vote. Uh, tab number 26, uh, which is discussion items. Do we need to discuss the commissioner expense accounts? Is that, I'm not sure. No. We good? You don't need to. Okay. No, we don't. Um, we'll take it up at the end of the year. Okay, thank you. I'll do it in the Attorney Bernard, do yes, we need to go into executive session? I am willing to be able to spare y'all today, <laughs> Madam Chair. Bless you. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other comments from the Board of Commissioners? Anything from the, uh, my uh, county administrator? Do you have any, anything? Um, we're not, uh, we do have the lunch and learn with the uh, representative voting at 1230. The 1230. In here. Okay. That's running 10 minutes late. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. If there's no other uh, things to discuss, if there are no other items to discuss, this meeting is adjourned.